like to say uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to another edition of the Carton Show. It is early. I can tell you that. It is early. I can tell you that. It is whoop, early. Anyhow, early. it's Monday. That guy right there, Super Bowl champion, Green Bay Packer Hall of Famer, on Greg time. Jennings on time. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. On time seat right here. This guy right here, Super Bowl champion, Mr. Willie Colon. Big in the paint. We got two football games tonight. <laughs> we got three next Saturday. We got football, 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 football. But let's do the appropriate thing and start you off with Monday morning... Headlines. They're the best team at home, I can tell you that. The Fast. Dallas Cowboys yesterday put on another offensive clinic in embarrassing those no good weasels from <laughs> Philadelphia to get to 10 and 3. I know the Eagles are going to have to go home and cry over spilt milk. Well, there was one thing when San Francisco did it, but it's a whole nother thing mm -hmm. when it's the Dallas Cowboys, right. your division rival. Mm -hmm. And for the moment, the Dallas Cowboys, shut your mouth. The Dallas Cowboys are in first place Ooh, in the NFC wait. East. You can hear the Philadelphia <laughs> scratching right now. What do you think about that? Go. Man, it was total team domination. You talk about Dak, 157 yards in the first half. Two touchdowns. Two. Defense held them shut out performance. You talk about special teams ball. I mean, Jerry can't do no bad. If Jerry had the Peacock, man, I would be going down Broadway like this. <laughs> yeah. Look at me, America. Look at me. Peacock. Yeah, Gregor, go ahead. Yeah, for me, uh, this, is, this is what the Dallas Cowboys have been waiting to do. Play in big moments the way that we have seen them play against what we would all consider below 500 yep. teams. Not yep. even consider they are below 500 teams, but against a team that they had to prove it against. They completely Completely dominated, like you said. Yeah, bro. For me, I, what was impressive is how they completely on in the run game as well as yeah. through the air just obliterated this Philadelphia Eagles defense. We obviously could do a lot on this game and break it down, but very good point because Tony Pollard early was getting the handoffs, yes, yes, and I can't remember a game this year Correct. where they featured Tony Pollard as much as they did early yesterday. And if there was any uh, any issue at all about Dak Prescott and where he stands right now amongst the great quarterbacks in the Ooh. league, <laughs> Dak Prescott Ooh. outplayed Jalen Hurts, much like Brock Purdy outplayed Jalen Hurts. And there's a new sheriff in town, oh, Rob, perhaps, okay. in the NFC. Look at we'll you get coming that. around that <laughs> I've always been a Dak guy. All right, day. headline number two. Well, this game ended with a lot of whining and complaining yeah, in Kansas City as the Buffalo Bills take care of business and they beat Kansas City 2017. This is the play everyone's talking ah. about. Travis Kelsey, a little razzle-dazzle to Kadarius Toney. Why was Kadarius Toney wide open? Oh. Well, because he lined up three yards ahead of everybody else yeah. on the Chiefs offense. And you can cry and moan all you want to in Kansas City. Remember, you won a Super Bowl a year ago off a referee's call late, but it was the right call, right? Well, there's no arguing that Kadarius Toney lined up offsides. And I think today, what you will get now that they've seen the tape, are mea culpas and apologies from Andy Reid and from Patrick Mahomes to the officials who did not cost them that game, Gregor. Yeah, number one, this is absolutely inexcusable for Kadarius Toney. And, and some of the complaining that was going on, even with Andy Reid talking about, you know, this is a shame, it's a shame for the refs in the, the National yeah. Football League. For me, when I look at a professional individual, it is a shame for this to be happening this late in the game for a player who has who has had issues. Yep, he dropped the ball yesterday. All, had issues all season long. Like, you know who you're on the field with. You have, as a receiver, let's just go to the offsides immediately. Like, the refs at points throughout the game will assist you and say, if you are split out wide, Crick, uh, back up or right. get on the ball. And we've seen wide receivers we, look to the ref. You look to the ref to identify whether or not you're on the ball or off the ball. Yeah. In this moment, because he's so tight, he's in a bunch formation, he's at the point a ref's not going to yell, hey, 19, <laughs> back up. They're not going to do that. Are you sure about I'm that? I'm positive about that. Yeah. Like, but at the same point and in the same breath, it's not on them. No. It's not on the record. It's, it's on Kadarius Tony. Tony in this And again, moment. when you do look at the film, not even based on the blue line, because that's unofficial, of course. Yeah. It's just so obvious that he lined up. And I've heard a lot of people talk about it. I hear Kansas City moaning about it. We'll get into that, obviously, throughout the morning. But
but you cannot argue once you've seen it that you could say it's a stupid penalty. Right. I accept that because yeah. it had no impact, of course, on the play itself. But it's very, very clear. You cannot line up in front of the ball. You've got to be behind, <laughs> behind the, the ball. ball. And Kadarius Tony, who's been a disaster despite amazing talent, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. once again rears his ugly head. And the Kansas City Chiefs now outside looking in saying, oh, no, we might have to play a road playoff game. We don't like to play road playoff games. We got lots to do today. I only gave you two headlines because we're so excited about those two. <laughs> I forgot about all the other headlines, including one of the great punt returns of the year oh, in geez. the NFL in that Ravens-Rams game. Don't worry. We got two and a half total hours. We're going to bring it all to you. Good morning. Hope you had a great weekend. And thank you for joining us here on the Carton Show. Hi, right, welcome back. It's the Carton Show. You know, the third headline we didn't have time to get to a few moments ago. Let's just acknowledge it right now. One of the great games yesterday, the Baltimore Ravens, the L.A. Rams. Absolutely. The Rams are balling right yeah, now. Are. I don't care what anybody says. You want no piece of them as they make yeah. a, an attempt to try to navigate you know, the NFC wild card and get into the playoffs. But that's a huge win, a signature win for the Baltimore Ravens. Back and forth, Stafford was every bit as good yesterday as Lamar Jackson was. And then it came down to a punt return, damn near 80 yards. And this was one of those, like, uh, you know, Madden-type things. Hit the B button. Hit the B button. You know, sprint, 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 stay up. And the guy's never returned a punt for a touchdown in his NFL career. Dives into the end zone, and that's a wrap. Baltimore, in winning this game, gets their 10th win. And now they do control uh, the path to the number one seed. But remember, week 17 is, as we like to say here, the biggest game <laughs> of the year. That'll be the game that decides the AFC number one seed. But I did want to acknowledge that was one of the great games yesterday. Mm -hmm. And the Ravens answered the bell and answered a lot of questions about their ability to win close games yep. against teams that can say toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Obviously, last night, Dallas and Philly is the game everybody wants to talk about as the Eagles now lose their second Eagles. consecutive game. And Dak Prescott was money. And the owner, Jerry Jones, acknowledged not only that he was money and that it's going to cost him a lot of money, <laughs> but he thinks he's actually the MVP right now. Listen to Jerry Jones from yesterday. Go ahead, guys. Uh, I think uh, he's a great example uh, to me about what football is. And football, uh, you very seldom get here as a football player. You have to become one. And, uh, he's become uh, possibly, and I would say, he's become the uh, most valuable player out of our eyes in the last several months. Look, I, I, nothing negative at all about Dak Prescott's game. I want to be clear about that. Da Brock Purdy's the MVP. Let's not get that twisted. Dak's in the conversation. You could bring his Why name do you up. Do this this you don't get embarrassed by bringing his name up. But you lost 42 to 10 to Brock Purdy, who does have the best record in uh, the NFC right now, yep. uh, along with the Dallas Cowboys. Right. But of course, they have the tiebreaker against Dallas. Why? Because Brock Purdy outplayed Dak Prescott when they went head to head. So Dak might be the runner up. But he ain't the MVP. He's definitely the MVP. And oh, yeah, I think yeah, he made yeah. a hell of a case. Low graphics, this is early, Craig. <laughs> I, I just know where they come from. 28 touchdowns, leading the league in touchdowns, yeah. six interceptions. What he's doing with this offense is flat out dominance. And what you look talking about, they have more plays, more time of possessions, yeah. more first downs, more yards. They dominated this game in all categories and solely because of Dak Prescott. To be fair, as Greg and I were texting last night with each other, they also played the New York Giants twice, the New England Patriots, the New York Jets, the Carolina Panthers, but this, but the Washington Commodores. Like, so you want to do that? You like, want to talk, they so you absolutely want, embarrassed all those teams, too. Yes, they did. But yes, great, they did. But great. So you want to talk about perception versus reality? Talk about the Eagles, right? Talk about the Eagles and what they've won. They've won close games, the yeah. games they shouldn't have won, yeah. and they've valid. They've had the better uh, record. They're not the better team. I never said they were. But my point is, Dak Prescott has proven time after time with the wins, good teams or bad teams, he's been the best quarterback so with the best I, I, offense. I'm, I'm with you here because when you look at what Brock Purdy is doing, and I, I don't, I'm not one to try to take away what's from what somebody has done. He's been absolutely stellar. Should he be in the MVP conversation? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Is he the MVP? No. No. He is. Not, I'm saying Brock Purdy Brock is. Not. Oh, well, so you're so wrong. thank you. <laughs> Brock Purdy is not. That, you guys right? like and, the and, wrong and here's The reason why, when you look at the numbers, if we can put these numbers back Ooh, up, they're identical. Yeah. Like they are identical. And who won head to head? I understand who won head to head. One time. I want. I, I just want to point something out. When you have a a receiving core 
that is always top two uh, or three in yards after catch. Uh -huh. Like that plays a role in who you are. As I'm not discounting the fact that Brock Purdy is getting them the ball. Right. But when you can throw the ball five yards to a CMC, to a Debo, to a Kittle, to a Brandon Ayuk, and they lead the league almost, they're almost top five every single year. Yeah. In yards after catch, that plays a huge role in your numbers. Yeah. Dak Prescott is actually doing it. Like, I'm not saying that CeeDee Lamb and others aren't getting yards after catch because they are, yeah. but it's nowhere near the caliber of what we're seeing Debo do every single week. It's funny. Christian McCaffrey do every single I week. I sit here, and I feel at the times like I'm just smarter than everybody else. How? Uh, almost like I have a PhD in football, and I didn't play professionally. I did have that one game for the Cleveland Giants against the Russian team, but that's another story for another day. Uh, true story. You can go back and look it up. I did play semi-pro football in Cleveland. One game like against the Russian Giants. It's a long story. That being the case, though. The Russian at, yeah, the Russian Giants. That's okay. where they went by. Uh, the three of us having played can talk, you know, intelligent football. You guys couldn't be more wrong. How? And you come across, frankly, as having an agenda <laughs> against the greatness of Mr. Irrelevant. I know you guys are bothered that he got picked last. Oh, no. I know you guys love the concept of, oh, we don't he's, use a, that he's a no system more. quarterback. No, I, I don't, don't believe say that, that yeah, Let me walk you through. I have a great example for you, all right? Yo, know, Brock Purdy doesn't play. The Niners aren't very good. We saw that in the NFC Championship game last year. If you want to, well, Brock Purdy and no yeah, other quarterback. No other guy, if you want to throw bullets or take shots at my guy, Brock Purdy, mm -hmm. uh, Dak Prescott's had a great year. It's a valuable uh, argument or conversation to have. Where does Dak stack up against the best in the league? For me, that's Brock Purdy. I would then point the finger without getting too in the weeds on it or going, of course, here too much because then the producers get mad at me. I saw a guy in Cincinnati yesterday score 30 points again. Jake Browning. And I'm saying to myself, what does he have well, to do? I'm going to walk you through what he has Please. to do that. I hear a lot of people talking about how, well, Brock Purdy's a system quarterback. He can't be the MVP yards after the catch. Yeah. Bengals offense looks just as good without Joe Burrow as it does with him. No. So Joe Burrow must be a system quarterback. Is no, he? not at all. Oh, he's no. not. But Brock Purdy is. When you Did they look that good against the Steelers a couple when, weeks ago? No, no, they, they couldn't didn't, really score they couldn't do points. Nothing. He didn't look good against. Were the you Ravens? saying that then? I take the win he on that. He didn't look good against the Steelers. In he had one fight game against the Jaguars. I do think it's great yes, that no. Jerry Jones is out there talking the way he's talking about that because we've obviously seen the opposite. My real question coming out of last night's game because it wasn't competitive. Let's be fair about it. The Eagles did not look like the no. Eagles that have run roughshod over the NFC and especially the NFC East the last two years. Jalen Hurts is something wrong. Yep. Either last year was an aberration, and I don't want to believe that it is because then it changes my entire mindset on who Jalen Hurts is as a football player or there's just something wrong with him this year because he went from MVP candidate Jalen Hurts. Guy was like 20-2 and two yep. in regular season games, mm -hmm. and the Eagles always found a way to win. And then yesterday, another fumble, as you see right there. He's a turnover machine right now, and that Eagles offense – there's something wrong with Yeah, that. I think they're tired. I, I think that when you see compared to what the that Cowboys look like on tape, they're popping off the film. And you got, some, you got to also understand, Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, Jalen Hurts, they all have uh, turnovers yesterday. Yeah, Which doesn't that's right. to good football. And so what they need and what they're struggling with is they're waiting for the magic to come alive, and it's not happening for them. Yeah. They're waiting for those big explosive plays. They're waiting for somebody to make a play that's going to flip this game over, now, and it didn't happen. Here's the, obviously the upside for Philadelphia. Right now you're feeling yourselves a little bit. You get people standing outside. The Novacare Center Philly with yeah. signs, run the ball, stop fumbling the ball, mm -hmm. don't throw interceptions. But we're all very well aware you cannot sit here and start digging dirt on no. the Eagles' grave because schedule-wise, yeah. it's going to appear that they've righted the ship. Why? Because of that. Yeah. Now, Seattle will be a test for them, for sure. Although Seattle got you know kind of embarrassed yesterday. Drew Locke playing instead of uh, Geno Smith. So you kind of throw the one out of the trash. But then week 16, 17, and 18, we all know what Philly's going to do. Philly's going to average 30-plus points in those three games. They're going to look great. And then we're going to have to ask the question, are they real or are they pretenders as they make a run towards another Super Bowl appearance? I don't know what they are. I've seen them look good. I've seen them win and not look great. And now I've seen them look bad 
in back-to-back -back losses against the best teams in the conference. Yeah, you've also seen them not have the ability to come back in the second half, which they've been able to do prior to the uh, prior long, earlier in the season. Yeah. What struggles with what's, what's troubling about the Eagles overall, man, from a total team, they're just not on the same accord, right? I mean, you're asking this defense to do more and be more, and they haven't been that all season. Oh, this, they this, haven't been anywhere all no, season. Right. By the so way, running against them again yesterday was oh, not that it, difficult. Five right. yards before, dude gets touched. They, in the last two games, they've given up 36 points. So you're talking about a defense that was supposed to be all world with this defensive line and this yeah. secondary rally they've been shaky. They cannot save Jalen Hurts in this offense. So Jalen Hurts is forced to do more, and they're not even showing up due to the turnover. So if you're the Philadelphia Eagles, you got a big problem right now. Yeah. Who are you? But it's going to be mass. That's a weird thing with Philly. They're going to go into the playoffs, and listen, they're going to the playoffs, obviously, and I don't think we're going to know exactly who they are. See, I don't think you can mask it because, for me, it's not even necessarily solely on the offense. I know we're going to focus on the offense because of Jalen Hurts and all the things and the pieces that they have on that side of the ball. But for me, I look at this defense, and they just haven't been up yeah. to par all season long. Good point. That's been the one consistent mm -hmm. thing that's been glaring, and no one wants to really focus on it. Like, yes, they've been great against the run early in the season, but as of late, they have not. A total defense, they're giving up over 350 yards a game. Yeah. They're, 20, uh, they're 22nd in the league in total defense. This is not a defense that we saw last season. And when you look at the talent that's on this defense, it's, again, inexcusable. You should not be this bad when you have the talent yeah. on the back end and up front where they, you can pressure the quarterback. What is going on? It, it starts to make me point the finger and I hate doing this, point but I have to. Point that finger. Point when you point look that at finger. defensive point. coordinator point Sean Desai, it's yeah. like, what are you doing or what are you not doing that is not allowing these guys to be productive yeah. and benefiting your, uh, allowing your offense to benefit from what they, they can't provide. cover. Bottom line. Well, and they really don't have any linebackers right no. now. Like yeah. I know you Running guys refer to that as the second level, which I don't know why we have to come up with phrases for these things, but their linebacking course stinks right yeah, now. That's can't. why they added Shaq Barrett from Indy, you know, because he was a Pro Bowl player, because they're desperate. I'm just trying to figure out, and you can discuss amongst yourselves at home, Eagle fans being upset versus Kansas City Chief players <laughs> complaining about the refs. Which one brings me more joy? Probably Philly. I think Philadelphia yeah, yeah. losing back-to-back -back games and having to go on the road. But good news, Eagle fans. It's a return on Friday of Bagels and Locks. Oh. I've got a guarantee coming your way, and those guarantees do not happen every week. And I asked the guys to check. In the year plus we've done this show, Bagels and Locks, 19-0. Oh. So we're going to put that to the test okay. a little bit later on this week. There's one game that sticks out like a sore thumb, Ooh. and I'm going to help you out with it. Uh, probably after this break, as a matter of fact. Uh, the Detroit Lions embarrassed themselves oh, yesterday man. against the Chicago Bears again. And Jake Browning did what nobody thought he could do. He's better than Joe Burrow. We'll explain. Oh, dude, no, it says, How would you say that it out says loud? It right here. It's I got a to think. I, I, I read it. it. Good to have you back, Willie Colon, of course, Greg Jennings, Cowboys Eagles last night. And you got to love it when the Cowboys Eagles get together just real quick because there's no love lost between the fan bases. So I want to show you a fight last night yes. in front of a memorabilia tent uh, down in Dallas. Oh, man. Oh. This is the slowest punching fight I've ever seen in my life. Here comes the right cross. <laughs> get him, Dad. Oh. oh, man. Yeah, and the, and the other part of this is nobody steps in. Nobody. No. Like, there's ample opportunity to protect these losers from themselves, right? Until this the death. This, and, this is Eagles on Cowboys <laughs> or Cowboys yeah, yeah. on Cowboys? No, it's Cowboys on Eagles. Oh, gotcha. And uh, the Cowboy fan did get the better of it. Uh, but there you have it. The best part is that that framed Jordan jersey really uh, survives the battle man. unscathed. That's the best part of this. But uh, that's one of those fights where I'm this saying like to myself. a five-minute fight. Yeah, but you know, you ever see a fight and you're like, man, I want no part of that. Like, dudes throwing haymakers. No. That fight, I'm like, I can get down with yeah, that. Yeah, you, you can yeah. break that one up. I got a shot in that fight. Break it up. I'm getting in. Like, I had a battle scuffle with my 3 0 What was that? Like a pillow fight. All right. Welcome back to the show. Good to have you here. Time now for a little something we like to call a first and football. football. Man, the Detroit Lions hate Chicago. The Chicago Bears hate Detroit. The Lions want to prove to the world that that near loss three weeks ago was a fluke. Did the exact opposite. They made all this question right now. What's up, DJ Moore with another touchdown? Everyone has to question rightfully yeah. so. Who are the Detroit Lions? Now, I, I told knows. you last week, I did think Detroit would win this game easily, so I was dead wrong on that. 
But one of the things I wanted to see was Jared Goff and the Lions offense outside in bad weather. Now, this was not bad weather Chicago style because we've seen a lot worse in December. Yeah. You played in it, obviously. You probably did as well. Yeah. But here's the problem. Detroit is a much different team when they play outside, Jared Goff included, than inside. The upside for Detroit is that was it. They pretty much yeah. have warm weather or indoor games the rest of the way. Yeah, the bottom line with this Lions, Lions ball club, it, it, third quarter, they just implode. I mean, it, it was a bad show. You're talking about Yeah, they three, took the lead late in the first half. Yeah, right. three yep. straight, three and, uh, three and out. On the fourth drive, they had a fumble. Golf looked lost. This defense couldn't do anything. I'm questioning who Jared Goff is at this point because early in the season, I thought he was a stout quarterback. But then as of late, he's become fumble, he, interception prone. His offense looks stagnant. They can't do anything. And so I'm worried right now, man, Campbell, who is your ball club? And because what we take pride in is that he has a pulse on this ball club and this locker room. And who's this guy? They have nothing. And especially they lost his center. Frank Ragnar, who I thought was going to, you know, be a, a blurring spot on the office line. That wasn't the case. This was all Jared Goff just not being able to perform. Yeah, it's a weird thing, though. They've still got a two-game lead in the division. And I know Green Bay plays the Giants tonight, but they're at six losses. Obviously, Detroit's only at four. So they could only stay within two games yeah. of the Lions. And I say that because the Lions are going to win the division. Yeah. Uh, their schedule's not incredibly hard. And like I said, no more northeast outside, you know, cold temperature, you know, kind of games for Jared Goff. But they've not played really good football for a month now. Correct. Whether it's a struggle against Chicago in the win yep. a couple weeks ago, defensively, they've been putrid. Starting uh, on Thanksgiving. Huh? Yeah, they've you know, losing to Green Bay, yeah. obviously. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying to myself, I know they're going to get a home playoff game, and they'll probably win it. Because the teams that in the NFC are vying for the wild card outside of whoever the wild card team is out of the NFC East, you know, all the other teams are beatable. But I can't trust the Detroit Lions now. No, no. And, and the reason why is because you mentioned it a little bit. Jared Goff is turning the ball over at, at an obscene rate. Like and you, fumbling the ball. You, you just what? can't at this stage in, 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 the, in the season, you yeah. cannot turn the ball over. When the weather starts to shift, when you're outdoors, yeah. the questions that we have are surrounding Jared Goff outdoors, you got to be able to protect the ball. Look at these numbers. Week one through ten, look at the turnovers, and then since then, like, it, it's just ridiculous. And to your point, Greg, like, prior to this, prior to that Seattle game at home, like, one b- b- bright spot for him is that he didn't turn over Correct. the ball. Correct. That he protected yeah. the football. How he was so money within his office. Outside of that Seattle game, it's going straight down and for so, him. And so when you turn the ball over, what does that then do to your defense? It puts yeah. them in sure. bad situations. When, you, when you're when you now up against your own goal line because your quarterback is turning the ball over or your offense is turning the ball over, it's sudden change, and now you have to step on and get a stop. This is not who that defense is. Now, they got to run the ball. I know when you talk about what Man Campbell is all about, you got to take the ball out of Jared Goff's hand right now. And, and that's yeah. sad to allow, say this time of year. Yes, yeah. and allow them the, your running game to be your driving force. And unfortunately, going into the postseason, and to your point, I don't, I don't question whether or not they're going to win a division. Yeah, but going the into the postseason, there, but... can you win a pl- playoff game? I don't trust this team in the playoffs if they continue also, to Also, real quick, way. you know, they've got the red-hot Denver Broncos on Saturday night. Who do, who do they have? They've on? got the red-hot Denver <laughs> Broncos. That's right. I got you. And then, of course, the interesting, you know, they got the Cowboys sandwiched in between two games against a division rival. Yeah. And while the Vikings are obviously going the wrong way, and they're not getting the quarterback play they thought they were going to get after that early start by Dobbs, you know, it's hard to beat a division rival twice in three weeks. So Detroit gets in, but they might limp in, which brings, of course, up the obvious question and the concern I have is whether or not Christian Harper is going to leave <laughs> Jared Goff that's a fair question, no? I mean, he yeah, keeps turning she the ball to do over. something to get him right. She might be like, who we drafted? Do like, who's next? <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. I feel I'm concerned for Jared Goff when it comes but to But Greg that. makes a good point. All the yeah. quarterbacks that we can see, good quarterbacks, at least top ten quarterbacks, they're playing well this time of year. Yeah, He's I, the one time at the time it seems like his arrow's going Let's down. go to second in football, and that's uh, Jake Brown yeah. leading the Cincinnati Bengals to really what was an easy win. 31-14, second straight win with Jake Brown. The Bengals are now over 500, and they're not going anywhere since Sunday. I'm sorry. I uh, give them a lot of credit for how they played with a backup quarterback. Give Brown and credit. He's made himself a multimillionaire as a backup quarterback for the next 10 years of his life, so it's all good in the hood when it comes to that. But don't get it twisted. These Cincinnati Bengals 
aren't going anywhere. Unless you want to tell me that it proves that Joe Burrow is a system quarterback wow, and anybody can step right in and lead the Bengals to 30 points of offense, which I'm sure you guys are both going to tell me, right, Greg? No, is, <laughs> or is that just Brock Purdy? He's the only system quarterback. Is that right? <laughs> Brock Purdy, Don't listen to I, I'm it, I'm not Greg. saying Brock Purdy is a system quarterback, so yeah. stop it. Mm-hmm. What Jake Browning is doing has been impressive. <laughs> It, but I don't think it's sustainable. It's when not. you look at the rest of their their schedule, you got the Vikings, Steelers, the Chiefs, obviously, and the Browns. Like, can you get two? You really need all of them. Can you at least get two to get to nine? Will that be enough? I don't believe it will be. And when you look at them where they are, they're, they don't have enough wins early on to where they will get over the hump. However, the magic number. What, they're, what they're doing is impressive. Offensively, who Jake Browning has but been? They didn't really do nothing, Greg. Yeah, it was, uh, it was screen passes and short passes for that offense. Oh, thank you for being consistent like, with it, Greg, you my man, hundred grand. But he wasn't like he was lighting up the field. It was dink and dunk. Look. It was like the Colts never seen a screen pass before. <laughs> I was like, listen, what are you doing? There's another one. Like, right another one. It was like it was screen. They had uh, between yeah. dinks and screen, screens. Yeah. They had 80 yards. I'm looking at the Colts like, hey, he's not going to throw the ball down the field. Like, stay, stay shallow. And I, right. like, he he did have a couple big plays to T Higgins. But outside of that, this was you talk about system quarterback. Yeah. It's like, hey. Just don't turn the ball and get the ball out of your hands. It wasn't like he was like the Look, next time in Montana. I'll say this. It's always a good story when a backup quarterback leads a team into the playoffs. You're watching it in Cincinnati. We're watching it with your guy Joe Flacco in Cleveland. Yeah. We're watching what? it in Indianapolis. There's all these teams right now, even here in New York. Is the Jets stay relevant with a big win yesterday? We'll get to it later on. What? Don't worry. Uh, oh when a God. backup quarterback, who's Why? always the most but- popular guy in town, <laughs> can lead you know a team or keep the ship steady <laughs> you know and get to the post season we celebrate that that's what we do but what, what like are we now saying jake browning can go on a team next year and lead the elite team no to victory that's what i said Sunday? jake browning will be a multi-million dollar backup quarterback because oh. he has proven if you give me a couple games that it, against average competition i'm a competent quarterback and, and that's all you can ask for a backup guy yep. like when you look at and to me, well, the defense I, shut out the Colts in the second like half. Like I, I so. under I, the defense played yes, well, yes. but but when you when you have a backup guy and he performs well, you can't automatically discredit the fact that he's a backup guy playing well. You have to understand that you I'm know, not expecting him to be what the starter is. What I am expecting him to do is exactly what you said. Don't turn the ball over. I hate Make sure you put you. the ball in our playmaker's hands. I mean, oh, that sounds like Brock Purdy, doesn't it? No, what it sounds like Zach Wilson, who threw 300, for 300 yards no, I'll take some right there. Against the Houston Texans. Like, he, was a, he did, like, Zach Wilson outplayed Jake Brown right. yesterday on tape. We you want to put it out there. We have to take you a quick break. For it. I'm what, sorry. Did he, what did Jake Brown do against the Jacksonville Jaguars? Was it all screen passes then? Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's oh, my gosh. Gosh. We're talking about Listen, I'm just saying. Here's I'm the just, deal. We got much, plenty of time. Plenty of time to argue this back and forth. Also talk about some of the other games, including, dare I say, the red hot New York Jets. Oh, God. Dare I say it? I should Dare I say it? Dare I say it? Team that's still red hot for a red playoff hot. spot. Dare I say it? <laughs> Did I say it? I said it. More not coming up. Ruining the, your draft. The red hot? I think the New York Jets pull off the upset. I do too. With a double digit point win. Not that part. Saving the season. I mean, what can I tell you? I'm just saying, I give it to you. What you do with it is your business, not mine. Greg Jennings, Willie Colon, very quickly, because I know it's not the focus for the majority of you, but how about the New York Jets? <laughs> That's right. How about that? Oh, was that 30 points of offense yesterday? Yeah. With the best field goal kicker in the sport and Zach Wilson playing like schoolyard ball. I forgot that Randall Cobb was even a Jet, and he had a touchdown yesterday. I did. It was only his fourth catch all year for the New York Jets. Was that Randall? (laughs) No, that was Gibson. That was Gibson. (laughs) No, I'm sorry. But Zach Wilson showing everybody what the Jets have seen in him in practice. Of course, you've just never seen it on a Sunday, three years into his career. Give that kid credit. Where all the smoke is around him. Oh, he doesn't want to play. Oh, his uh, career's a failure. He'll be out of the league. Blah, blah, blah. Dude showed up in a real NFL game and threw for more than 300 yards and beat the vaunted Houston Texans. What happened to the Texans? Because the better quarterback yesterday was Zach Wilson, not C.J. Stroud. Spot the line. I I will say this. Zach Wilson, he has this ability – 
to when be his handsome. back is all the way all the way in the corner, yeah. crouched up against the yeah. wall to find a way to punch himself. He's like up. a raccoon. It, it, a yeah. raccoon. Yeah. Literally. That come raccoon. Out you you get a raccoon in the corner, they, they come, come out scratching and fight. But you know what raccoons eat? Trash. And that's what he's been <laughs> thus far. Uh, so we'll play it. Let's, I get, I get let's be keeping 100. 27 out of 36, 300 yards, two touchdowns. Did have the one fumble loss. Uh, bigger picture now, as you see his numbers right there, which is his best game, obviously, this year, maybe of his career. Game uh, of his yeah. career. All good. It, may, it might have been his best game of his career. 100%. But the flip side of that, we should focus more very quickly on the Houston Texans. They're in trouble. And they're in trouble because first Tank Dell goes down last yeah. week. He's done for the yeah. year. Nico Ryan, yes, yesterday leaves oh, the game. Uh, I'm not sure his status you know, going forward. You know, they've lost three or four legitimate guys uh, on that team. And C.J. Stroud took a pretty good beating uh, by the Jets' defense yesterday as well. So now the question is, how does Houston recover from a bad loss? Because I'm sure they had this game circled on their calendar as what should have been a win. Yeah, they can't because this was a concussion injury, right? So now you're questioning from the neck up what the state of C.J. Stroud. It wasn't yeah, like – his head hits the turf right yeah, there. Yeah, that was yeah. a big hit by Quentin Williams who had a monster game. That, first of all, the Jets defense played out of this. Yes, they, oh, did. yes they did. I don't know if anybody is a fan of Sauce Garner, but he honestly had his most complete game yesterday. He kid was it's all over the It also shows you, you know, when your offense can hold the ball for a little bit and can put points on the board, it changes – the to that entire line. aspect of what you can do defensively because yeah. playing with the lead is something the Jets have never done, right? And having the ability to just rear back and go get the quarterback. Now, look, injuries were a part of it. He was missing a starting tight end, mm -hmm. both of his wide receivers. Yeah. No joke, they had running backs playing wide receiver in the second <laughs> half yesterday. But the Jets took advantage of it. But on top of that, this is what you got to give credit to Zach Wilson. Because a lot of times when we talk about some of his negative issues is not being poised in the pocket, his mechanics being off, being indecisive. It was none of that yesterday. He saw it, and he got rid yeah. of the football. He got to the playmaker's hands. You talk about Garrett Wilson had a big day. You actually saw they commit to the run with, obviously, Dalvin Cook and uh, Brees Hall. But overall, this was a total team win led by Zach Wilson. So let me play uh, just Fantasy Island here for a second. Mm -hmm. They have the Miami Dolphins coming up next week. Rightfully so. They're double-digit underdogs in Miami. The Dolphins have already beaten them once, as you know. After that, though, Washington, they stink. Obviously, Joe Flacco in Cleveland. And New England's got no offense at all. Can I dream the dream, Greg? Can I dream the dream that somehow, some way, the Jets pull off? Stop laughing. Pull off the upset it's against not Miami. Great. Can the Jets run the table to 9 and 8. You know what, is that possible? You know what interesting I think it is possible. What is that barely hanging on right there? I, I think it is possible. Talk about I'm, it. And I'm, look look I, at the screen before you say no, that. No, no, no. Look I'm, at the screen I'm looking, before you I'm talk. looking at the screen. We're in it. I, I'm going to tell you why I think it's possible because of because of what we just talked about about that defense. If Zach Wilson can be half of what he was yesterday. And mind you, the weather wasn't great. No, right. Like, no. he was doing that in inclement weather. Rain. It's like, if you can be – this yeah. has to be the most frustrating position of a head coach, offensive coordinator, quarterback coach, fan base, all of the above, when you watch a guy who's so up and down and you hear the support coming out of the locker room and from the head coach about what he's been in practice, and then you see this and it's like, oh, is this what they've been talking about? And you know about? what the key moment of yesterday's game was? When he fumbled the ball, trying to get a first down running the ball, and it was the right move. Got out of the pocket, got out, out of trouble, got the first down, obviously gets hit and fumbles the ball. The first guy over to him on the side that I noticed this was Quinnen Williams saying, it's all right, big dog. We got you. you. And you know why that happens? Talk about it. When you're able to put up points and you are providing something that's beneficial to your defense, they're like, no, we got you. We got you. you, you put, <laughs> you're playing today. We got you. Yeah. And, and that's why I say they can run the table. Because if he plays half as good as what he's done or anywhere close, this defense is going to provide you opportunities to be in ball games. Now, look, we're obviously way premature on this, but I will, I, I will point out <laughs> way? way premature on this. That's this right. is what pisses me off. Go about. ahead. Because I consider you very level-headed at Thank times. You. Thank and you've you. been a very realist about the Jets, Thank right? You. What Thank pisses you. me off, the yeah. one conversation we haven't talked about, which makes my stomach turn. Go. He played so well yesterday, he may remain on the team. Yeah. 
Well, I'm he may I, remain a Jet. He could be my backup quarterback. I got Aaron Rodgers next Have year. you seen enough of Zach Wilson? Does one game convince you that he deserves to be on the I team? I think Zach Wilson proved again yesterday that he's an NFL quarterback. <laughs> this is the problem. And that's the problem. And you're the problem. Because you support this. If Jake Browning's the answer in Cincinnati, he's an NFL quarterback, right? If Joe Flacco is an NFL quarterback, <laughs> then that guy right there is also an NFL quarterback. Now, I this will not I'll time at the top. He I, know, I know, One I know, game. I know. Now you're a believer. I'm a Jets addict. What do you want me to tell you? You kill me, man. I'm a believer in the moment. We're if not we hanging get, out no more. If we what, get else, if we what, get, else can he, what else can what? he hang his hopes on? Thank you. But this is my thing. Listen, he is who he is. This offensive line had a great game. Yeah. This defense shut him out, right? Zach Wilson played like a guy who had nothing to lose. If we beat Miami, we're running the table. We'll be 9-8. and eight. So might not be good enough to get in. But don't forget, if you look at the, the thingamajig there, the the standings that we put up there a second ago, right? Whatever that was. Remember this. We own tiebreakers against a lot of teams. <laughs> <laughs> right? You do, you do right. this. Because don't about. forget, the first tiebreaker is head-to-head. Then depending on whether you're tie-breaking for a division or a wild card, it either goes to division record or conference record. But I own Denver. I own the Houston Texans. Don't get me started now. We're two games back. But I got the tiebreaker. How do you see it? And I play the Cleveland Browns. The How Buffalo about that? Bills. You I mean, split against the Bills. Split against right. the Bills. So then it becomes conference play. All right. right. Listen, well, if, they, if they get played past Miami, I'm going to be tough to deal with that week. But we, we're a week away on that. <laughs> Speaking of the Browns, just very quickly here, you got to give Joe Flacco, Cigar Star Indian himself, a lot of credit. And you, because you're a Flacco Did guy. Did I say it? To be fair, Naguchu is open. Who? Like, no, who? How do you Nagochu. say it, Naguchu? <laughs> Nijoku? I apologize. Naguchu's like a man amongst boys in this Monster. game yesterday, but he's wide open. Like, can someone guard the tight end of the slot receiver no, for Jacksonville? Freak. And let me tell you something. Give Flacco Great. credit. Give the don't Browns just give credit. You don't give no the credit. The Browns solidify their playoff positioning. And, you know, I love the city of Cleveland and their people. But the flip side of this, do the Jacksonville Jaguars know how to play defense? <laughs> and when's Trevor Lawrence going to make a big play to win the game and not throw an interception in the other team's red zone? When's that going to happen? First of all, man, they should have been on the field. He got he Woo! pretty much Another interception. The field last week. So the fact that yeah, he's playing, I give amazing. him a lot of credit for yeah. playing. But that dude is a turnover machine. And here's interception number three on the day. Yes. And that one sealed it right there as the Cleveland Browns hang on to win uh, against the Jaguars, 31-27. to Let me say this. Say it. For uh, both teams coming into this game, the importance of this game. Jags, of course, off the bad loss. Lawrence gets hurt last week. Cleveland. You know, backup quarterback, is Flacco going to be the guys at DTR who did get a little playing time on fourth and one, yeah. you know, to, to run the ball successfully, which he did. This was a huge game, more so for Cleveland than Jacksonville because the Jags kind of own the division still record-wise, but give the Cleveland Browns a lot of credit. That defense has not been dominant no. the last couple of weeks, and while they still gave up almost 30 points, when they had to make a play, and there were four or five times in that game when it looked like the Jags had momentum, mm -hmm. and we're going to flip the script. The Cleveland Browns, whether you want to give them credit or blame Lawrence, I don't care. The Browns' defense got the job done. Yeah, and you kind of expect their defense to get the job done because of what they've been all season long. Even though they gave up a lot of points, you got to give credit again to your guy. You called Old it. Man Joe Flacco. Flacco. And I'm going to tell you one thing. I, I've, I've looked at this situation, and I'm starting to side with you simply because when you look at the Cleveland Browns and who they are, they're very reminiscent, and they're nowhere near the Baltimore Raven team that, that he won the Super Bowl sure. with. But the way they're built, good offensive line, yeah. really good defense. You don't have Gotta to put game. and shoulder everything on Joe Flacco. This is a very similar situation. A really good offensive line, good defense that is going to step up and keep but, you in games, allow your quarterback to make those throws. That's what they've done. But this is what this is what we gotta understand. Like every backup that's played for the Browns have won a game for the Browns. That's right. right? That's which right. Is, which is impeccable. On top of that, the relationship he has, we're talking about Joe Flacco. The relationship he has with Amari Cooper and David Njoku right now, for only being there a short period of time, needs to be talked about. Because that shows you why a guy who has a hundred and eight starts underneath his belt yeah. is why you go get him off the couch. Isaac, he's and a the guy. line, bottom line, who's probably the top five in the league, dominated yesterday. Real quick, one aspect of this game I want to show you, and I question coaches all the time. Uh, Doug Peterson made a decision. It didn't cost them the game, but it could have. They score a touchdown. They get within 31-27, okay? And then they, and that's the final score of the game. Then he decides with no timeouts and a minute 30 left 
to go for two. Yeah. Now, here's the upside. You go for two, you're down by two, right? Yep. You don't convert the two-point conversion. Now you're down four. You need a touchdown. And I bring it up because you have no timeouts left. You got an onside kick regardless of the outcome of the two-point conversion. But if you don't convert it, and they didn't, now you need a touchdown. It was one of the most mind-boggling stupid decisions by a coach on Sunday. And I still, for the life of me, I don't know if nobody asked him about it. But it was a minute 33 on that clock. Yeah, but what's the benefit of going for two? Well, you, you clearly When the don't. downside is, if you don't convert it, let's say you get the onside kickback. You have no timeouts. Right. A minute 30 left. Now you got to go 50 yards as opposed to yeah. go 15 yards and tie the game. Yeah, you clearly don't want to go to overtime. If you're Doug Peterson, that's what he's thinking. Wow. Exactly. Exactly. Quarter, exactly. Why, because Joe Flacco scares you no, that it, much? It has what scared you? He was moving and grooving, right? Craig? Has nothing to do with Joe Flacco. It has everything to do with your quarterback and understanding his situation uh, and, injury your defense and what you're dealing with in your defense. Yeah. Uh, coming up a little later on the show, which starting quarterback in the NFL has been marginalized the most? Oh. Is it Deshaun Watson? Is it Joe Burrow? Or is it somebody else that's oh. been marginalized? Plus, Kansas City is upset with the referees. Cry me a river. <laughs> All right, good morning, Here we go. Way to be up by <laughs> yeah, See, we, we don't get that out of Craig Jennings. Let's go. We got that out of Willie Clone. Great to have you here. Dak Prescott touchdown pass. C.D. Lamb. There was a foul call. No, there wasn't. Take it back. <laughs> we pick up the yellow hanky right there. There's another touchdown pass. And another one. And another one. And the Dallas Cowboys are the best home team <laughs> in the NFL. And the Eagles go home with their tails between their legs. Another pathetic performance on defense. Offensively, they were all over the place. Not very good. But take a deep breath, Philadelphia, <laughs> because after the Seattle game next week, it's Giants, Cardinals, Giants. But let's focus in on what happened last night. Have the Dallas Cowboys done enough to assert themselves now as one of the elite teams in the NFL? I do. I, I think they're one of the best out there, not solely because of Dak Prescott, because of what they've been able to do, especially last night, having a, told, a, team, a team total dominant win. Yeah. Talking about special teams, talking about offense, talking about defense, everybody showed up to the party. And what's impressive about Dak mostly, man, it's, it's his composure, right? It's his ability to deliver the football time after time in crucial situations, being efficient on third down, had 157, 157 yards in the first half, two touchdowns, coming out the gate hot, which I think yeah. the Eagles haven't done in the last couple of weeks. They've been stagnant all the way up into the second Dude, half. Dude, I'll tell you something else. You know, one of the signs of good teams, especially really good home teams, Greg, are the ability to dominate. And I know we've, to be fair, we've been accurate in saying, well, I wonder what happens when the Cowboys play a really good team, right? Mm -hmm. Prior to yesterday's win against the Eagles, the Cowboys, not their fault, don't have a single win against a team going into this weekend that was over 500. Doesn't exist. You can look at their schedule. Just trust me on it, okay? The win yesterday against Philadelphia, highly regarded as the best team in the sport because they had the best record in the sport going into December. I think is the signature win of the Dak Prescott Cowboys in his career. Yeah. But again, the issue and problem, totally unfair, with Dak Prescott is, oh, great, you played really well at home in a big game against a great team. But if you don't do it in January, nobody's going to remember what you did on December 10th against the Philadelphia Eagles. Not fair, but accurate. Yeah, and it has to be accurate because that's when the games mean the most. Right. I mean, legacy. You're, where you're playing for Lombardi trophies. You're playing for legacy. You're playing to be one of the teams that are that is remembered forever because you've done something special. And so the only way you can do that is in the postseason. But yesterday when I watched the Dallas Cowboys, that, what, what's so impressive to me about this team is that they find ways to beat you in every aspect of the game. Special teams, you mentioned it, yep. defensively, offensively. Dan Quinn, in my opinion, did something yesterday that I, I just I thought it was brilliant. It was subtle, but it was brilliant. He, he allowed Stephon Gilmore to travel with A.J. Brown right. and or – Devontae Smith at times, pending the situations, primarily with A.J. Brown. Why is that important? Because the last time we saw the Dallas Cowboys defense on the field, it was against a team in the Seattle Seahawks, and D.K. Metcalf oh, went crazy yeah. on Deron Bland. Right. And we all figured, myself included, oh, 
they play they play the Philadelphia Eagles. Guess what the Eagles are going to do? They're going to attack Bland. Sure. Dan Quinn didn't even allow them to have that opportunity because he wanted their best, most savvy corner on their best. Great point. And he did a great job. He did Stephon a great job. Stephon Gilmore was all over the table. Gilmore last earned night. his check for the year last night because right. that's why they acquired him. Veteran guy who we all thought best days behind him, but savvy, very smart player, obviously. And you saw it from the first snap yesterday. Yes. Gilmore was locked in on A.J. Brown. Normally, you know, A.J. Brown makes, you know, four or five catches every game, and he's, like, wide open. That didn't happen last night. No, I, it, it's a great point, Greg, because what, when they acquired Stephon Gilmore, they didn't just get him because he was a playmaker. They, they got him because he was competitive. He was competitive against any, your number one. And to your point, he traveled. But one guy that popped up to tape that we needed to pop up to tape was Michael Parsons. Yeah. He had a big day. And this guy had, a, had the flu, by the way. He's battling the flu. And so when you talk about the back end compliment the front end and vice versa, it shows you why they were dominant and held the Eagles scoreless. What I'm most impressed about, you talk about Dan Quinn, was his ability to send pressure. Mm-hmm. He wasn't afraid to get after Jalen Hurts. He yeah. wasn't going to allow him to sit in the pocket and have the dink and dunk and escape. And you got to give credit to the Cowboys because we talked about Bolsa. What did Bolsa say last week? Hey, we got the blueprint. Give the blueprint. Jay mm-hmm. Stay in your rush lanes, right? Because he wants to escape. Yeah. Once he doesn't have that first read, once he wants to do, get out. That didn't happen. So that's why they was able to neutralize the Eagles. The uh, flip side is right now in Philadelphia, you know, they're crying. They're very upset. And that's what happens in Philadelphia. Uh, all of a sudden, this is a bad football team. We weren't very good all year. We barely beat guys. The negativity in Philadelphia is running rampant. It's crazy, but also expected because, you know, the whole thing's built around one guy. No, he's right over there in between you guys, Jalen Hurts, right? Uh, Jalen Hurts has been money good. Yeah. MVP candidate last year before, you know, he hurt his shoulder. Uh, again, best record of football going into uh, last night's game. But let's not get it twisted. Jalen Hurts is also right now a turnover machine. Fast. That's what he is. Fumbling the ball, throwing interceptions. He's top three right now in the league in turnovers, and it's a real problem for that offense. It's a problem because they trust the ball in his hands. Especially oh, is when he fourth? I apologize. And when he's running he's the ball. He's fourth in turnovers. It doesn't game. matter. He got 15 on yeah. the season. This is your franchise Ma- quarterback. We call him the machine. And this guy's supposed Sorry, to take Bert. you to another Super Bowl. You got 15 interceptions on the year. You know who's doing well in the turnover category? That press guy. He's kept his word thus far. So, yeah, if you're Jalen Hurts, this, this calls for concern. But I think the problems are bigger than just Jalen Hurts, right? Defensively, mm-hmm. they've embarrassed themselves the last two weeks. And you start questioning, well, what are the Eagles. We all agree the Eagles are going to get really healthy over the next four weeks. Like Seattle's the only team that poses a significant challenge to them. They have the Giants twice. No disrespect to Tommy Tommy DeVito. DeVito. They got Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals. No, oh, they stuck. Um, (laughs) So the Eagles are going to right the ship. The Eagles most likely are going to still win the division, by the Mm -hmm. way. I know right now you wake up and you're in Dallas and you learned how to read and you're like, it says to me here, Sally, uh-huh. that we're in first place. If the Eagles win out, the Eagles win the division, and they go right back to the number two spot, and then you're relegated to the fifth seed. That's on the table. The Eagles' schedule is easier than the Cowboys' schedule down the stretch. And while I know I'm getting a little ahead of myself, the Eagles are going to be fine unless, unless, and it's the old adage we say in the show, Greg Jennings, that... Tough times don't build character. Adversity doesn't build character. Adversity reveals character. Mm-hmm. Well, right now, the Philadelphia Eagles have some adversity. They're going on the road again to play Seattle. Seattle's not the team they were last year or even earlier this year, even though Kenny Walker is back. We're going to learn a lot about the Philadelphia Eagles with what they do in Seattle. We are because the Seattle's defense they can be mm-hmm. they can be a problem a for a guy for an offense that's struggling. But for me, when I look at this Philadelphia Eagles team, it's not just about what we're not seeing them do and how they're performing offensively. It's what we're not seeing them do defensively, which is get stops. Yeah, so not get stops. Greg, look at right there. They have allowed 36 points in the last like few you, games. You can't you can't allow this amount of points and yards and expect for your offense no. to overcome it yep. every single week. Like Sean Desai, your defensive coordinator, what are you going to do to improve this defense? When you look at the secondary, and the secondary has been a problem all season long. Like, I- I'm trying to put my finger on it, and the one thing that I can come up with is the age. Is age catching up with these guys in the back end? Because the secondary, they're all over 30 outside of Blankenship, the guys who primarily get the most snaps, and and they're not being able to cover 
uh, for long periods of time. And why am I saying long periods of time? Because if you don't get pressure, which we didn't see them nope. do that last night against sure. Zach Prescott, nope. you got to cover for four or five seconds. Yep. You can't do that and expect a team to it, win. You hit it right on the head. They, they usually they, they, only, they ran the ball at him. Like, yep. it, this wasn't like, No oh, one's afraid of the Eagles defense. They ran right up the gut a couple times. So, I know you got big Jordan Davis and Fletcher Cox and those guys. They were not afraid. You well, talk about Zach Martin, Zach Martin and that offensive line. They came to work. Man. While the Dallas Cowboys took care of business last night with a 20-point uh, just whitewash to the Eagles, one of the better games of the day happened late 4 o'clock yesterday as the Buffalo Bills, I told you guys, do not sleep on the Bills. I've got them going to the AFC Championship game this year <laughs> as the Bills beat the Chiefs. But this play right here is the one everyone's talking about. Travis Kelsey improvising, finding Kadarius Tony for the go-ahead touchdown, except for one little problem. Kadarius Tony lined up three yards offside. Not one yard, not two yards, a good seven yards offside. Kadarius Tony. Oh, hang on one Just second there, the big guy. Oh. That is an egregious <laughs> offside by Kadarius Tony, which is why, of course, he was wide open. He had a head start, obviously. But after the game, the Kansas City Chiefs were not happy. Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, let's hear what the whining and the crying uh. and the excuse making. Uh. Go right ahead, play the audio. I never use any of this as excuses, but normally I get a warning before something like that happens in a big game. Um, a bit embarrassing in the National Football League for that oh, to take place. Right? To take away greatness like that, I mean, for a guy like Travis to make a play like that, and who knows if we win, but as I know as fans, you want to see the guys on the field Is that right? decide the game. Huh. That's why last week I didn't say anything about the flag. They didn't get called on the Marquez. And so, I mean, I, it, I mean, they're human, man. They make mistakes. But, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's every week we're talking about something. It's funny because last week you blamed yourself for the loss. You didn't say anything about the referees. Well, and, that's what he and said. And here's the thing. For Andy Reid to come out, and Mahomes, so we all love and respect, best quarterback in football, blah, blah, blah. For them to come out and talk about how, you know, fans just want to see the guys play. They don't want referees determining the outcome of big games or taking away big plays. That's one of the most embarrassing things I've ever seen, especially from a team and a coach and a quarterback who won the Super Bowl last year on a referee's call holding against James Bradbury. By the way, when the refs gave them the call that guaranteed them a Super Bowl win, did they feel bad for the fans no. who didn't get to see the players decide the outcome? That is a joke. And Kansas City should be better than that. But they're not you know blaming why. the referees. You know why they're not better than it right now? Because there's trouble in paradise. Yeah, are damn and right. been that way all season long. Like, this is – Patrick Mahomes has been stellar <coughs> as it pertains to the lack of production he's been getting around him. Not that he's been MVP caliber Patrick Mahomes that we are accustomed to seeing. However – he has put this team in position to where they can be successful, primarily these receivers. And this is, this is like all the frustration, it just – it popped. Right. It, it just yeah, it was too much. He's frustrated at his own guy. He really is. But he can't. had another drop yesterday. But this uh, is, other guys had Richie, drops yesterday. Richie James had a drop. Yeah. Like, it, it, it keeps but happening dude, over and over and over again. But dude, you won a Super Bowl but based great. on a referee's call, and it was the right call, and you loved it. This yes, is, by the way, yesterday, for Patty Mahomes to lose his crew like that and MF everybody, even when he said congratulations to Josh Allen, he was complaining about the refs. Yep. Here's the only question I'll ask. Go watch the tape yes. and tell me was Kadarius Tony offsides or not? He was. Bang! Yep. Was he offsides? He was offsides. Then right. shut your trap please <laughs> about how the referees embarrass themselves. You're embarrassing and, and, yourselves. And the, and the fact of the matter is like with, with, with Patrick Mahomes saying let the players decide the game who are on the field. Is Kadarius Tony on the field? Not yeah. on that last yeah, play, right. was it? He was but is he on the field right there? Yes. yes. Yeah, and, and what did he commit a foul? Yes. Yes, and, and it's not the ref's responsibility to yell and say, hey, no, one, 19, back up. But it is the responsibility of Kadarius Toney, the, pl the, the player that's on the ball or hoping to be on the ball, to look out to the ref and re confirm whether or not he is on size. Like, I, I don't want to hear what should be and what could be. What I well, do know – is that this is inexcusable. That's right. You can, I don't, I've never, I have never 
and I played that position. You did. I never lined up past the ball. Like, no? I don't know how that works. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, the ball, like, I'm, I, I just, it doesn't make sense to right. me, Brad. The, the frustration, you highlighted the frustration. Frustration comes to, to fruition because they're out of excuses and they're running out of time. Right, and that's the bottom line. You go, you have a slow start. You talk about two games with this MVS drop on Monday night, and now you're talking about Kadarius Tony. They have no more excuses. That's there right. are no more solutions. So when you're a Super Bowl so-called outfit, and you're looking around scrambling for answers, and you don't have it, that's why you have that outfit. So outburst. after the game, there's always uh, one member of the media, they call him the pool reporter, is allowed to talk to the head of the officiating crew. In this case, it's a guy named Carl Cheffers. He's the referee. I'm just going to give it to you real quick. Uh, in regards to the Katerius Tony penalty right there, certainly no warning is required by the side judge there. But they do give you warnings, though. If you look to them, they, sometimes there's other jobs they do. You, all right? Especially if the player is lined up so far <laughs> off sides where they're blocking the view of the ball. Like, and what you're saying is right. This is called attention to detail. You're in a very close game. You need a play to win it. It's second and ten. It's on you. All you have to do is look to your right and go, uh, can you guys follow me? Can we have a cameraman here? No, it's all good. All right. All you have to do, I'm here. All I got to do is do that. And we win the game. I could do this. So I we don't win the game. I could do that. We win the game. And then there's one other thing. While everybody in Kansas City is crying and moaning. So they call the penalty. Yes. So they move him back five yards, Thanks. all right? So now, correct me if I'm wrong, it's second and 15, meaning the Kansas City Chiefs and the great Patrick Mahomes have second down, and then they have third down, and then they have fourth down. Yeah. Is it the ref's fault? that they couldn't get 15 yards on the next three downs. No, I mean, credit Ed Oliver. He got his hand, big paw up there and batted one pass, and they weren't able to convert after Crying. that. Crying. But overall, Yuck. man, like, I don't know. Like, I, I kind of get it. I do. I've, I've seen refs go, like, for me, little times when I would line up, they'd be like, hey, Willie, get on the line. Get on the line. The next time you don't I'm do it. I'm glad you said I'm that. Serious. I'm glad you said that. So, there's times when I'm like, okay, fine. I'm, I got I to gotta start getting on the line. I'm going to call it. And when they call it, it's on me. My point is, at sometimes, and I think what Patrick Mahomes is talking about is the inconsistency. Because there's times where refs do it. But and it's a good call. Do I'd stop there because you want to jump Absolutely. on that count. You want to know why and when that happens? Earlier in the game. It doesn't happen when the game is on the line yeah. when the ref is saying, hey, hey, big fella, you got to get on. When they, when they tell offensive tackles that they're off the ball a little too far, it's typically early in the game when they've identified it and not late in the game. Sure. Your last drive, the game's right. on the line, and it is so blatantly obvious that you got to call it as a ref. If they do not call that, we're all looking at the ref saying, sure. you got to call this. 100%. You can't miss that. It's egregious, and I'll tell you something else. You know, for Kansas City to, to complain and moan, is anyone surprised that it was Kadarius Tony who did it? No. Like, well, his face told you it was well, him. Let's be honest about it. And by the way, Kadarius Tony got benched right afterwards. Yeah, he did. Because he's not on the field for third down. No. He's not on the field for fourth down. Which further lets you know they know he was in the wrong. Bang! He was because they said they don't know. The cameras point, kept showing him on the sidelines. I'm not back. saying they didn't know. My point is, at the end of the day, I can understand why they say keep it consistent. If you're not going to call it in the first half, why call yeah, it in the that, fourth quarter? Maybe that that didn't present itself in the right. first you half. You don't know that. Nobody knows that. Unless, well, we, well, unless we comb through the tape. I watched. I did last night. Okay, I went through okay. the tape. So are you? Are you, okay. are you now defending I this? I just, I'm just always going to be a fan of a ref not deciding the outcome of the game. I'll yeah, but, that but the ref has a game. job. It, and as much as we but all But the refs are inconsistent. Look, I agree. And we hate the refs. And there were some moments in yesterday's action across the board where the refs made calls that are mind-boggling. I'm not, I'm not yes. defending referees. But when it's that egregious and the ref does have a job, and as much as I hate refs because they typically stink, when you line up, a yard and a half in front of the ball. Here's the ball, and I'm in front of it. What do you want the refs to do? But you can't do? pick and choose but, when to do your job, you, Craig. But you know, this is, this is where the refs don't win. They, they're in a lose-lose because if the ref doesn't call this egregious offsides yeah. by Kadarius Tony, and their reasoning is, well, we don't want 
to we decide the right. game. But great, we seen... want the players to decide the game totally... because that's what everybody keeps telling us. Right. So I just held on to my flag. I got you. Bro. We would have a fit. But we also know up. we know also know refs do make up calls. A call they miss, they come back and make it up. Sure. Later. So but my I'll tell point you what. is be consistent. I tell and you they what though, consistent. they they were righteous in this one because it's a blatant egregious. You can see it like there's no debating it. He's all yeah, well, you, well, you put a spotlight on it. Okay. You put well, a blue line on me. I'm, tra- I'm trying to make a point okay. to you. Like, that is not on flag? Yeah, but if that is not on the screen, everybody's like, oh, he's lined up. He's no, fine. he's not. Oh, come he's on. He's so blatantly offside. We don't even it's have. It's embarrassing. Everybody, okay, real talk. Everybody in the studio. I know people can't see everybody. Yeah. Prior to that spotlight, if we were watching it on the couch, okay. did we see him offside? I, yes. I, yelled, I yelled upstairs. I go, yeah, he's offside. Absolutely. I liar. I as, I, and, as a receiver and, looking and, at him, when you first saw them lined up, he is in front of everybody on the football field. Listen, what are you doing? I watched that. And here's the deal. And I appreciate the fact <laughs> that you're an offensive lineman because for the first time on this show, your argument fails. All right? <laughs> and I know you have a sensitivity to being lined up off sides in your career from yeah, time to time. Sorry, guys. So you don't want to be called for it. Right. That was egregious. And the fact that Kansas City embarrassed themselves both on the field after the game of Mahomes and then Andy Reid doubling down on it yeah. after the game is beneath them. Because you won a Super Bowl on a referee's call a year ago. And nobody complained about that in Kansas City about not letting the guys play. Kadarius Toney is a waste of space on the field for the Kansas City Chiefs, much like he was for the New York Giants. If I was Kansas City, they benched him yesterday. So you're right. They knew he was in the wrong. Yeah. You should cut him today. He knew he was in the wrong. Right. But you don't call it. Not in that moment. Oh, you don't stop do that it. in that moment. You don't do it. Stop it. I would, I, wow. What do you want me to I, say to you? I, I, you've nothing said else. You've said nothing enough. Else. Why would you want a ref to decide the outcome of the game? Gonna, when listen. Travis Kelsey yeah. died, right? Yeah. Throws it back. The Great. building erupts. Great. That's why we watch football. Not That's to see right. a ref go. Yeah. Offside. Well, then don't have refs. Let's, don't have refs. Just play back. I'm fine with football. Well, well, if there was no refs in football, I would have been in the Hall of Fame. Trust me. Well, don't, don't call no more offsides, refs. Willie Cologne has to moved to Wrong Island. <laughs> and yet that's where he's going to be. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's where Willie Cologne is. I love him. Doesn't change my relationship with the guy. But he's living alone on Wrong Island. Do we have time to do the Ravens? Yeah! Yeah! Ravens. Give the Ravens a lot of credit. That's a great win for Baltimore. And the Rams, who are, you don't want a piece of, if they keep playing like this, if they get into the NFC playoffs. But in overtime, how about a 75-yard punt return with the B button hit? I was and then yeah. pick it up. right down the left side. By the way, I Look, that long snapper, yeah. he was like, oh, man, not me. You <laughs> tell like, his whole face, please not me. I got to be honest, as he stumbled there towards the end, Willie and I were saying the same thing. We both fall over nose deep, no doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> but some, oh. somehow, right? Oh, oh man. I'm down. Oh, yeah. I'm down. I hope we kick a field goal and win it. Yes. But he takes it to the house, I'll and start. the Ravens win. What a great game it was if you didn't get to see it. Stafford is playing at a high level. And again, the Rams may not get in their game under at 6-7. and seven. If they do, that's one of those teams with Super Bowl experience that will upset some people. Yeah. On the flip side, the Baltimore Ravens, waiting on what the Dolphins do tonight, of course, are in total control of the number one seed in the AFC. And then the Rams get the Ravens hell in the first half, dropping 20 points. Yeah. And they, obviously the Ravens came out in the second half and kind of rallied and, put up and shut them out. But overall, man, Stafford, he doesn't get enough credit, man. That dude is scrappy. Yep. He's tough. You talk about Puka Nakua. You talk about all those guys. They play football, man. Yeah, and they're very well coached. Remember, McVay wasn't going to come back this year. He may have been in the broadcast booth. There's a lot of rumors. But that dude kicked (laughs) coaches Tush off, and the Rams are playing very well. Yeah, Rams, great job. You lost the game. Uh, Baltimore (laughs) Ravens, for me. Yes. Like, this, this was by far, in my opinion, their most impressive win. Because it's against a team that was very scrappy. Yep. But this is what we've been waiting to see Lamar do. Be down in the fourth quarter. Forced to throw the ball to win it, and he delivers. Yeah, like, nobody guarded him. No, no, no. Guy. That wasn't that wasn't the game-winning drive. Sure, that was earlier. But what I'm saying is, in the postseason, what has been the narrative of the Baltimore Ravens? They're the Dallas Cowboys of the AFC. Sure, you're right. You're like right. they've been put out in the first round, divisional round, what have you, because they haven't been able to play from behind. I got you. When they got down and they needed to throw the ball. 
This is why you acquire a guy like Todd Munkin. Change up the style of offense that you play. Force your quarterback to throw early in the season, throughout the entirety of the season. Because of situations like this, they trust and believe that Lamar can lead them down in passing situations. Now at this stage in his career, that was impressive. Not just that, because he was great, uh, but the emergence of Odell Beckham over the last couple weeks for them. I know he's wide open on some of but these. That was, he ran he made, the wrong route. He made a couple acrobatic catches. You know, the one for the touchdown. He had another one down the left sideline where he had to readjust and make a catch for a first down. You know, they lost their starting running back. They lost the security blanket and Andrews, the tight end. Yeah. And yet that offense is still good enough to put a 30-burger on anybody. And I agree with what Greg's saying. Because of who they were playing, granted, it was a home game. It was 1 o'clock, West Coast, East Coast. All those things in their favor, weather, rain, all that yeah. stuff. But you saw Lamar Jackson answer the question of, can I lead my team down the field and make – by the way, you guys mocked earlier in the show, you know, little five-yard dump-off passes by quarterbacks mm -hmm. and then a receiver or running back taking it, you know, 50 house. yards, right? He's throwing the ball 20, 30, 40 yards down the field successfully. He played great. He played phenomenal. He's an MVP and, candidate, and, and, too. And, and I'll, I'll touch on Odell oh, for me. Oh, here you go. For Everybody me, when you have, MVP when you have a player like Odell – I think what I've loved about what the Baltimore Ravens have done, they take a couple plays throughout their yeah. offensive sc scheme and they make sure that they have a design play that is featured to him. Like that sluggo route from the inside, that's a slant and go from the inside. It wasn't a wrong route. It just was a ball that was thrown. Well, he was so said wide he ran open. the wrong route. That's why I said that. He said he wrong the wrong route, and that's why he had to turn around. He realized he was out of position. As far as, as, far as out of position. Yeah. Like for me, you run, you you make you make guys put you put guys in position to where they are best suited to make plays. Open That's space. what they've been doing with Odell Beckham Jr. Putting him in the slot, allowing him to get one on one favorable matchups, and he's making plays. Yeah, we what got bro what broke my heart is that everybody in the AFC North won besides the Steelers. It's okay. It's okay. So, it's okay. Listen, it's okay. Pittsburgh. It's okay. It's okay. We got to figure it out. By the way, you're still Steelers. living on Wrong Island. You know what? It's okay. Get your hands off. It's okay. <laughs> you should take your hands off me too. All right. We got much more football coming your way. Uh, we also have the worst game maybe ever played in the NFL yesterday. And that question for you, Brock Purdy, my guy for MVP. He's now the favorite. Ooh. But do the guys support that? No. Find out right after this on FS1. Hey, you know what? Every fan of every average to bad football team is saying after yesterday, Thank God I'm not a Viking or a Raider fan. <laughs> Arguably the worst game in the oh, history man. of the NFL. No joke, final score, Minnesota 3, Vegas nothing. That's right, an NFL game ended 3 nothing. But the Vikings defense was like, yo, we made a play. We're going to celebrate <laughs> yeah. it. So watch this Vikings celebration. They did the old college oh, cake stand. The old college oh. cake stand. Yeah. Yeah, well. To be fair, the, the defense did pitch a shutout, but offensively, they only got one, two, three points on the board. But that 3 nothing win keeps their faint playoff hopes Man. alive. But no more to Minnesota. You're not making the playoffs. Yeah. Sorry. I thought you might, but they even replaced Dobbs late in the game, and it was not very pretty. It you was. know what's pretty? Purdy's pretty. Purdy. Pretty Purdy. Purdy's pretty. Purdy. 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 And San Francisco does what is not easy to do, beat a division rival twice within a month. And that's exactly what they did. Dime. Look at that dime right there to Debo Samuel. Brock Purdy, the MVP of the league, 28-16. And by the way, it wasn't even that pretty. You know, the San Francisco 49ers did not dominate. I think we've seen enough, guys. Thank you. Uh, the way you that's, thought that's they might have. Beautiful. Considering they did win the game 28-16. to But they are letting everybody know, you want some? Come get some. We're, we're the team to beat. Yeah, but offensively, it was just a game train. Every time they got the ball into one of their playmakers' hands, it was like a 20-yard 20, 20 reception, 30-yard reception. Yeah. It was just crazy. Overall, Brock Purdy played out of his mind. It was a gritty win, bottom line. So when you talk about the dominating division, they showed Seattle. They put him in the baby seat. Yeah. Gino just – I mean, Gino didn't play. But Drew Locke, man, he just can't – he couldn't keep up with Brock No, Purdy. and I give Seattle credit. You know, they fought back. They scored early. They made it a game in the first half. So there's something to be said for that. And I know Sam Fran, at the end of the day, didn't cover the spread, which got up to 13 or 13 yeah. and a half. Uh, but they do win by double digits. It's all they care about. And because the Dallas Cowboys took care of business against Philadelphia, the reality for San Francisco now is if you win out, and the schedule's hard, if you win out, 
You are the number one seed, and nobody can take that from you mm -hmm. because you've beaten Dallas and you've beaten Philadelphia, and you are the team to beat. Now, to be fair, the Isn't Ravens hard, game. Right? Well, how's the it hard? They got the Ravens, the best team in the AFC. One game. That might be the Super Bowl right there yeah, that's fair. in week 16. Yeah, that's fair. Right? That's fair. So their schedule, they got one monster on it, and it's the Baltimore Ravens, and yes, that game is in San Francisco. Huge ramifications of that game. But San Fran is clearly, all due respect to Dallas and what they did last night to Philly, San Fran's the team to beat. I just don't see a loss on that schedule, even with Baltimore. Did you talk okay. about they had a slow start? Well, uh, then San Fran's the number one team. And I see it as of right it. now, they are. I don't see them losing to anybody, especially Baltimore. I, I, I love Baltimore. Talked about Lamar Jackson being an MVP candidate, not taking any, any way for it. The Dolphins showed up, in the, I mean, defense showed up in the second half. But overall, what they're able to do in offense, can, you think Lamar Jackson can keep up with that offense? I think Lamar Jackson can. I think, and I don't want to, again, I get in the weeds on things uh, a little too premature. Maturely here. Because the Niners are healthy. Here's the problem with that game for Baltimore. The next week they play the Dolphins. They do. So that is a that is a look ahead game. A trap game, if you will, because the AFC number one seed gets decided the next week. All yeah, right. No, I, you don't look past the 49ers. I'm, I'm, but I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, human nature is <laughs> that game means nothing to Baltimore. Because even if they lose it and the Dolphins win tonight against Tennessee and the Dolphins beat the Jets, and for a couple days there, yeah. the Dolphins have the number one seed. Whoever wins week 17 is the number one seed because the head-to-head -head matchup. So the Baltimore-San Francisco game, I know a lot of you want me to grab the thing and go, the biggest game of the year. It's not. It's a meaningless game. But the, listen, It means absolutely look, nothing. They can get embarrassed, Baltimore, that is. They can uh, get blown off the field. Doesn't matter. And when you, when you think about what the Baltimore Ravens do against NFC teams, they embarrass them. Yeah, I know they just he's very good against they, the NFC. I know they like played the Rams, and, and it was a tight game. NFC. But what, yeah. they're not, what, 18-1? Something 19, stupid. Something yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. So we know that they're not going to lay over. But for me, when I look at this 49ers team, <clears throat> it's hard, man. When they play this way, they're unstoppable. They it's are. Like you, you, the question is, can they be beat? Like, I, that I is think, the real right, question. There's two questions. When San Francisco plays the way they played the last couple of weeks in dominating Philly and – Since Jacksonville, and, and, they're coming off the look, spot. Here's the deal. If they play this way, two things, two questions come up. Number one, Brock Purdy's MVP. I think you guys agree. And then number two, who is out there good enough to stop San Francisco when they play at their best? You know who it is. No, I don't. That the Jets? Cowboys. <laughs> I mean, they beat them 42 to 10, Will. That was earlier. Yeah. They're I, a different team coming out of that I'm, box. I'm with you. I, so, you got to stop using that one bad food bar that yeah. Jack had in the second half of that game. I think San Francisco may not lose a game this year. If and was, that includes the playoffs. If there was an offense to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Brock Purdy, is that Prescott and the Cowboys. So, so when you look I, at I, the, By the way, I'm with you, except that we have evidence that when they play head-to-head -head in Dallas, guess what happened? 42 to 10 happened. Yeah. I'm sorry, in San Francisco. I apologize. Yeah, in San Francisco. Go ahead. Yeah, when you, when you look at this 49ers team, like they, they understand who they are. And as much as people want to say Brock Purdy is a system quarterback, I disagree with that. I think he makes the system work just sure. as much as the system fits him. Like, so you can, you can slice it yeah, however you want. The system thing's stupid. Yeah, it's, it's dumb. I don't even know what that means. What, I, what, what is real is if you cannot tackle these guys once they get the ball in their hands. That's facts. It's a wrap. You are going to lose against Especially these, this team. Especially Debo. Especially Debo. Yeah. When you, look at these numbers. Like This is like every year with the 49ers, but this season they have almost 2,000 yards after the catch, like when they That's catch insane. the ball and then they run, you got to tackle guys. Yesterday, they had 192 yards yeah. of offense. We, By the way, can I just ask the question, who's first and second? Are the Dolphins ahead of them? It very well may be. Our uh, researcher went to the bathroom. When he comes back there, we'll definitely, <laughs> we'll definitely deliver the answer Come on, on that. Troy. Wash your hands, Troy. Like, it's, like you tell me San Francisco's third. I'd love to know who's first and second because my, my bugaboo with you guys and Plaxico and Jacoby when he decides to come to work is, <laughs> is the is – Ah, everybody <laughs> gets it ah. <laughs> Look, I work five days a week. Everyone else should too. Uh, but here's the deal, right, is – it's an easy knock, and don't get it twisted. It is a knock. It is a criticism. It is an attack on Brock Purdy when people claim, well, it's really not Brock. It's the yards after the catch and blah, 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 blah. 
But you could say the same thing for a lot of quarterbacks, right? Is Joe Montana a Hall of Famer if he doesn't have Jerry Rice and Roger Craig? Probably not, right? Well, that's it. Right? And you, you could do that. Is Troy Aikman a Hall of Famer without yeah. Emmitt Smith and Mike Irvin? Probably not. You're so they're telling me right now that the Kansas City Chiefs and who else? And the Cincinnati Bengals yeah. are first and second. Oh, Patrick Mahomes, he must be a system quarterback. It's a negative shot at the performance of a young quarterback that people try to break down, and I won't stand for it. Yeah, you're right. Not on my watch. It's, always, it's only because of the weapons he has around him. They don't give him the credit to your point, Greg. Uh, Greg. It's, it's, it's what he does with the football in his hands and the decision he makes with the football that he doesn't get enough credit because he's not just throwing guys open. He's finding windows. He's scrambling. He's throwing it down the field. He's digging and dunking. He's doing everything you need at that position. And he's doing it at By the way, they're telling me we have uh, audio, exclusive audio of uh, Patrick Mahomes uh, on the field. And I know I'm jumping out of left field. I apologize for that. But we have exclusive FS1 audio of Patrick Mahomes right after the game yesterday. I know a lot of you saw him going crazy. Here's Patrick Mahomes uh, yelling after the game about the, uh, the call against Kadarius Tony. You guys have that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's, yeah, that, yeah. that's too yeah, good. They're tell, hey. Yep, there it is. Yep. No one else has this audio. Oh. Um, yep, that's it. Uh, oh. oh. oh yeah. Big bang. Yeah. Very upset, very upset, very upset. Uh, it's similar how we also have exclusive audio of the entire city of Philadelphia after last night's loss to the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> if you guys want to play that real quick. Um, this, yep, there you go. Somebody okay. feed that baby. Feed the baby. <laughs> And I'll tell you uh, something. But you're a little bit later on this week, man. when we do Bagels and Locks, which we've only done 19 times in two years, and we are 19 and 0 with it, there is a game already that stands out, and it's a problem for the Ravens. Game. And it is a problem for the Dolphins. Whoa. And it is a problem for the Jaguars. And it is a problem for every AFC playoff team. There's a team coming, and you want no part of it. And this team will do the unthinkable on Sunday. I'll give you a little hint right after this on FS1. It is who you think it is. By the way, speaking of Buffalo, oh, no. watch this great play that didn't count. <laughs> Kansas City trailing here. <laughs> oh, the Travis Kelsey flea flicker to Kadarius. You're going to get cut, Tony. Oh. But the play gets called back. Why? Because dumbass Kadarius Tony dumbass. lined up two yards, three yards, nine yards, off sides. The referee had no choice but to throw the flag and call the penalty. And then despite having three shots to get a measly 15 yards, the Kansas City, Kansas City Chief offense stopped right there dead in its tracks. So, of course, let's blame the referees because Kadarius Tony's an idiot and lined up three yards off sides. Now, you don't know what Buffalo would have done when they get the ball back. These teams obviously have a history of back and forth to back and forth. But let's focus for a minute from the Kansas City side. Do they have a right to whine and moan and bitch and complain about Kadarius Tony being called for egregious offsides when he was egregiously offsides? No. Thank you, what? Mr. Wide Receiver. No. Right. You can't. Like, and by the way, they should cut Kadarius Tony today. They're not going to cut like him. Just like they don't have somebody him. else. I, I don't care what you do with him. I, I mean, but you, I, I, as I tell my kids, when they do things that you just can't have, yeah, can't win with them. Uh, you just can't, can't win with them. Mike Singleton. I'm sorry. Yeah. Can't yeah, win with Mike Singleton. Yeah, right. Like, like when you when you look at this play, and for the life of me, I can understand a guy being called for illegal formation and yep. being off the ball yep. and not on the ball. Mm -hmm. But to be past the ball, I've never I've never lined up past the ball in my life. And you be played uh, how I many played, years? I played 10 years. Yeah. And oh, I played go. the precision that is in yeah. fraction of a foul right now. Yeah. Like, I, I've never – and you're that close to the ball, so I, that means the ball is there. Oh, let me just stamp. Look look down the line. Which he's doing. And see – well, he's, he's looking to try not to go offside. Forget he's that. He started Forget offside. That. Like, I, I hear you. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? No, I okay. don't. Look at your teammate and see, am I in front of you guys? 
<laughs> oh, yeah, I'm way in front of you guys. Something's wrong with this. It's like, hard to defend. It is. It it's is. hard to defend. Then you got to stop trying. But no, I got to say something, Listen. and you don't let the refs decide the outcome of a game. Yeah, that's, that's what happened. That's hocus pocus, no. Is, is it inconsistent is. or not? Like, the reality is this. If the guy commits a penalty, and this one's egregious because it's not a questionable, well, did he hold him? Didn't he hold him? Yeah. This is, I'm lining up two yards across the line of scrimmage. Incredible. The referee can't see the ball. It, thank you. you so don't, why not say, right. hey, 19, give me a step. Because it's not my job. But they do it again. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I'm but tell you. Grant, okay, before you go, and I'm going to let ahead, you ride. Go ahead. Have you not been warned by the refs that you're on and off? Because yep. what do you do? When you get up to line, you go like this. Yep. Right? And yep. what does the ref go? That's okay. it. Yep. You've done it. Yep. So my point is, why can't it happen on that situation? I don't think Kadarius Tony can, did it. Can, can, he didn't check, and I'll tell you another reason why. Go ahead, sir. It only happens to the receiver that split out wide. Yes. You have never seen or heard a ref yell to a player and say, hey, 19, back up, when they're that tight. In a formation. Now, had Kadarius Tony had that bunch formation been out on the numbers, sure. a ref may say something then because it's right there. Sure. But you're not going to yell and give an offensive player an advantage. Now, if you're in proximity, close, he might say, hey, you might want to back up a little bit because you're right there. Now, There's a relationship. All there. this means, let's get down to the results of the game. Obviously, the Buffalo Bills win the game 20-17. to 17. Kansas City still has such a stranglehold on the division, uh, even with Denver's resurgence, to be fair. You know, they're going to be either the two seed, the three seed, the four seed, obviously. They're going to win the division. So then the question is, is there any faith or belief right now in the moment that this version of the Kansas City Chiefs can go on the road and win a playoff game? And I'm going to answer that question for all of America. The answer is always yes, because Mahomes is different. Sure. That being said, this is not the same Kansas City Chiefs offense. They got problems across the board with that offense. Again, only scoring 17 points. The flip side, though, are those resurgent, upset Buffalo Bills. Because I'm going to tell you something right now, and I'll give it away. The Bills play the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Uh, Fox is America's game of the week. All right? The Bills are going to beat the Dallas Cowboys. Stop it. Done and done. What's in the cup? Done and done. You know that's not The true. game's in Orchard Park. The Cowboys haven't traveled in a month. All right, Dave, sweet home cooking, right? Why, are you saying because of the weather? The Buffalo Bills are going to beat the Dallas Cowboys. And, oh, by the way, I think they're winning out. The Buffalo Bills are the team you should not sleep on because offensively, whatever happened, they have figured it out. And that includes Gabe Davis with zero catches yesterday zero, is- and Stephon Diggs not being a major Stephon. factor in that game. But somehow, some way, Josh Allen has rediscovered Josh Allen. The Buffalo Bills winning that game yesterday are the team nobody wants a part of. And believe it or not, and I find this fascinating, the storyline is that they all rallied around Sean McDermott after the story came yeah, out did. last week about his unfortunate comments and offensive comments about 9-11. But not just his players, coaches from around the league, too. Yes. Andy Reid called him before the game. A couple coaches from around the league say, hey, big fella, we understand what you're going through. You got our I'm report. telling you, I know defensively they're not great. They did a great job yeah. yesterday against Kansas City. Josh Allen is playing like a man again, and the Buffalo Bills create a major problem for a lot of teams, Greg. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not – as as gun ho about the Buffalo Bills right. as you are right, right now because I, I just they've been too inconsistent all season long. What I will say is they're figuring something out. And they that are. something is Josh Allen not having to force the ball down the field, play hero ball, getting his running backs in the passing game and making plays <coughs> that way. When you look at this game and you James Cook was all over this game. Played great. Not just running the ball, but in the passing game. This play in particular, it was it's a great catch great throw, execution, all the things. Perfect defense. Nick Bolton probably shouldn't come down on the tight end and just carry James Cook. 
If he does that, I don't know if this is a touchdown. But the execution and the awareness of Josh Allen understanding, I got my guy. The moment he saw Nick Bolton take the tight end yeah. and try to get hands and physical on the tight end, I got my running back. He's been making those decisions. And if he continues to play this way, yes, this team can run the I team. think the Bills beat the Dallas Cowboys. I do. I think the Bills have so they found something. Look, I know they, they, they've played a bunch of really tough games in a row. But Josh Allen, that's the Josh Allen we all fell in love with. Yeah, I mean, his touchdown run yep. yesterday, yeah. which is kind of – it's not like pretty, but he carried a pile of grown oh, men yeah. <laughs> who each weigh an average about 280 pounds, about four or five extra yards to score a touchdown. That's grit. That's the Josh Allen that Buffalo loves. And I'm telling you now, if he keeps playing the way he's been playing, the Bills are a tough out. Yeah, he was a grown man yesterday. I got to play to back it up. We're going to throw it on the screen for you. He looked like <coughs> me wrestling my kids with goldfish in my pocket. At the end of the day, man, you talk about one. You talk about another two. Ha, get him off me. A quick dive for two yards. I know that it wasn't a big completion, but it's him pretty much snatching defenders off him, man. When you're talking about him pretty much putting the team on his back, Greg Jennings, that's what he did <laughs> yesterday. I mean, you're talking about how many more, how many more Chiefs defenders have was taken off the team? Yeah. He was Godzilla yesterday. He played yeah. big. It's interesting you, you throw that play up because that is the very play that I'm like, don't throw it. Just take the sack. <laughs> don't, don't let it go. It incredible. He was a monster but, yesterday, But man. to your point, that's what makes Josh Allen Josh Allen. That's why you fall in love with Josh Allen, because he's willing to do things like that and give you an opportunity to make positives out of a negative Scrappy, situation. Throw the bill sketch up real quick, guys. Obviously, it's not easy, easy, and I do think they're going to beat easy. the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, they're, they're, I think, a one-point favorite, maybe, or underdog. Was it plus one? Yeah, they're uh, plus one against the uh, Dallas Cowboys coming up uh, this Sunday. And then you've got the Chargers who may have a new head coach in week 16 because uh, uh, the last two weeks the Chargers have embarrassed themselves. The Patriots have no offense, and there's a good chance Miami's got nothing to play for in week 18. So all of a sudden, you can now kind of script the roadmap for the Bills yeah. on how to get in. And I'll tell you this, if I'm right, if the Buffalo Bills find themselves in the postseason, they will be one of the hottest teams going into the playoffs, and you're not going to want any part of that team. Because let's be honest, the Browns don't scare anybody. The Steelers don't scare anybody. The Colts don't scare anybody. The Texans now are injured across the board, and Stroud's got the concussion. Yep. Denver Broncos, to your credit, Greg, playing great football right now. Cincinnati's got a backup quarterback. Of all those teams in the middle and on the right, the most dangerous team is the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, I, I, I will agree with that. Like, for me, I, obviously, I, I picked the Broncos. Uh, but when you look at Hot. what they what they provide, the Buffalo Bills offensively and yeah. defensively, they are the scariest team to play. Because they quick, can stop uh, you defensively sorry. and they can score a lot of Quick points. grammar question for the grammar police. Do you say, is the Buffalo Bills or are the Buffalo Bills? When asked the question, Anybody want to jump in on that? Are are You guys will all be wrong. It is. How? I'll walk you through it off air. I just wanted to make sure that I was in the uh, oh, in minority the on that oh, one. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. What was that Western Michigan? Was it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't be that guy. <laughs> you are that guy right now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So he is, the Bills yeah. the, is the Bills he, making no, the Is the Bills making the playoffs? He's wrong. He's wrong. It's R. Okay. Okay. What? What? I have to ask the question. What if I asking? take the Bills out is and the just Bills, say Buffalo, is the Bills it's good? Is, isn't it? No. It's not? No. Is the Bills no? good? Who says is? <laughs> <laughs> they is. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, it's Monday. What we learned. So much happened this weekend. It's our favorite segment on Monday. It's called Get Learned. These are the things I learned this weekend. Uh, agree, disagree, uh, jump in, whatever you guys want. Number disagree. one, I learned after watching that Kansas City-Buffalo game, one of the great games yesterday that came down to a 2017 Buffalo Bill win over Kansas City is that the Kansas City Chiefs are the biggest crybabies in the NFL. And that says a lot because the Eagles still play football in the NFL. But after this play, Travis Kelsey trying to make a play, flea flicker to Kadarius Toney for the go-ahead touchdown. It gets called back because Kadarius Toney was nine yards off sides. A blind guy could have seen it. Matter of fact, the blind guy did see it. An NFL official. From that <laughs> standpoint, all the Kansas City Chiefs did after not getting 15 yards on second, 
third and fourth down and losing the game to the Buffalo Bills. I think it's their first December home loss in like a decade, right? People forgot about that, how great Mahomes of Kansas City has been. Rather than own it, rather than recognize that it's Kadarius Tony's fault and not the Zebras, Kansas City is crybaby town. Yeah, they're 44 and 12 at home. Right now, Arrowhead had this kind of this magic that if you went in there, it was a guaranteed loss for you. Yeah. Not no more. You've seen Philly going to do it and now Buffalo. Yeah. By the way, they home. lost to the Broncos this year. They had never done that before. Yeah. They lose at home in December now. They had never done that before. We have exclusive FS1 audio from the field. Yeah. From the field. This is Patrick Mahomes going berserk on the field after they don't convert that fourth down play and the Buffalo Bills take a knee to win the game. Here it is. Oh, oh man. Oh. Feed the baby. And for this franchise to come out and say, as Andy Reid said, you know, that the officials should let the players decide the outcome and you can't have officials making calls in big spots. Does everybody in Kansas City have a short-term memory? Yes. Uh, stop with the crying. It's enough already. Uh, can you not remember a mere nine months ago when the Kansas City Chiefs <laughs> were parading themselves down the streets of Kansas City as Super Bowl champions? Why? Because the officials called holding on James Bradbury, which gifted Kansas City a Super Bowl title? Was it okay for the refs then to blow the whistle, but not okay yesterday? Greg Jennings, help me out. <laughs> yeah, it was okay then, and it's okay now. And what we're seeing out of Kansas City, and Patrick Mahomes in particular, is a lot of pent-up frustration. Like, this is this has been going on all season long. Isn't you pouring the answer for that? Say it again. What happened? <laughs> Sorry? Excuse me? Excuse me? Well, we're talking about pent-up frustration. Right. Yeah. There's an answer for that. Yeah. But I'm sorry to get you off your game. It's not Subway. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, well, they do slice their meat yeah. fresh. Right, yeah. <laughs> but, no, this is, this is pent-up yeah. frustration. And when you think about what's been transpiring all season long, it's been the guys around you. Kadarius Tony has been yeah. number one offender. The By the way, he had another like, drop yesterday too. Like yeah. it's 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 one of those situations where it's like I, I Patrick Mahomes. I credit him in this regard. Yeah, he has Aww. not publicly embarrassed any one of his nope. Teammates. He's, he's no. taking on. He's, he's saying it's well, he threw a it. pick early in the game yeah. too. By the way, he owns it. However, when it's been going on, like we've all seen it. Like, these receivers have let him down. No doubt. He has not played up to his standard either, so he is not excused. However, when you have a pre-snap penalty, that is that, – that's just – And late. there's no excuse for it. There's it's no – It's not – I mean, and it was egregious. And you put the officials – look, we all hate officials. I'm not here saying I like officials. I hate the officials. We all do, right? But you're putting the official in this case in a terrible spot. Very few to no officials want to be the story after the Correct. game. There you, might be a guy or two that gets off rest? on it. In this spot only because you put the official in a bad spot where he's got no choice. He can't not throw the flag when it's sitting five yards in front of him. Like all Kadarius Tony you do have had a to choice. do. Not call it. No, but you can't. Come on. This isn't like a questionable call. Did I see it? Didn't I see it? It's right there. Like, he's blatantly offside. I've seen plays that are blatantly right there not get called. Well, we I'm not it. saying we have. Right. But in this case, you can't tell the ref, hey, I know he's three yards offside, but let this one go. You can't. And look, I'm with you. The refs stink. They always stink. The officiating this year might be worse than any other year. Facts. Of course, we say that every year That's right. when it comes to sports. But the reality is this. This is on one guy and one guy only. And it's not the side judge or the referee. It's Kadarius Tony, who, by the way, as you see in that picture right there, is looking to his right. Yeah. He's got to know he's ahead of the football. And, and if I'm not mistaken, this is on their sideline. And so, like, what, and why that's important is because if it were on the Buffalo Bills sideline, meaning the formation <clears throat> where Kadarius Tony is lined up was – on the side of the Buffalo right. Bills, you you will have everybody on their sideline yelling at the refs. He's offside. He's yeah. offside. Sure. Well, the ref that has to call this is on your sideline. Yeah. Like you can't. And if he can't see the football, 
that means he has to call something. The bottom line, the Chiefs have to start faster, right? The, the Buffalo Bills came out, they punched him right in the mouth. Yeah, a bunch of crybabies anyway. All so. right, uh, the second thing I learned this weekend is something, frankly, I already knew, it just reinforced it, and that is that block, 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 block. Black Purdy? Block, 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 block. Black Purdy. that Brock Purdy, not Black Purdy. Don't get started <laughs> I up. Said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm, yes, yes. <laughs> go ahead, take it away. <laughs> is that Brock Purdy is the clear-cut favorite now. For MVP, I learned that again yesterday. Two for 900 yards. They beat the Seattle Seahawks by double digits. And I mean, first, first, first. They're all first to me right there. Brock Purdy's the MVP. Yeah, I, I think for me, coming after that bye week, after going through a three-game losing streak and really performing, starting in Jacksonville, he's been stellar ever since. And what you love about Brock Purdy, man, he's getting the ball not only to the playmakers, but the playmakers are backing him up by getting touchdowns in big games. And so, however you feel about him, are you mad at the weapons or are you mad at the fact that he's playing on a dominant outfit? The bottom line, he's solely getting the job done himself. The uh, third thing I learned, I'm skipping ahead one, guys. The third thing I learned this weekend is that the Detroit Lions, the Jacksonville Jaguars, and the Philadelphia Eagles are all frauds. None of them, <laughs> none of them are winning a Super Bowl this year. And while they're all going to the playoffs, none of them are legitimate Super Bowl contenders. With the Eagles, their defense stinks. With the Jaguars, I don't know what they are. Their defense stinks again now as well. Yep. And the Detroit Lions, for some reason, have a tough time with the lowly Chicago Bears. They're all playoff teams. I want to be clear about that. Sure. So they're three out of 14, but none of them right now are should be considered legitimate uh, Super Bowl contenders. Yeah, but you got to believe the Eagles are going to turn it around, I right? don't. I don't. Why? I don't, I don't. Because I don't like Philadelphia. Okay. That yeah. Is not no, the but defense, look, not the they, defense here's the reality. The it's one thing to say, you know what, you haven't beaten a good team. Yeah. And that was the storyline for the Miami Dolphins and the Dallas Cowboys. That it was fair. None of the teams they beat had a record over 500. That's a legitimate, honest narrative, okay? But when you get blown out, by the good teams you play, as Philadelphia has now, back-to-back -back weeks, I think that's more telling than just having an easy schedule. Yeah, look, the Philadelphia Eagles have problems, the Lions have problems, the Jacksonville Jaguars have problems, and I said this about the Jacksonville Jaguars, and you could attest to this, like, they had this a <clears throat> AFC North gauntlet that they were going to go yeah. through. Right. And it wasn't a matter of can they compete with those guys, it was how healthy they were going to come out of those games because this was going to be a different style of football that they're playing. Christian Kirk out. Obviously, we saw uh, Trevor Lawrence get hurt last last week. Yep. And then he played this week. So, for me, I'm not surprised about the Jags. The Lions, I I'm from Michigan. Yeah. And I, I like the Lions. They're having a great year. Yeah. But they're, they're doing what we all kind of have come to, to grips with. They're going to mess it up. Yeah, I, I want to say something quickly about the Bears. Quickly, uh, yeah, go. I mean, quickly about the Eagles. Everything that the Eagles are going through is an easy fix, by the way. Just take care of the football. You talk about Devontae Hurts and A.J. Brown all having turnovers. If they take care of the football, they're, they, they're in this game. But they don't. A fair point. Let me just squeeze in one more before we take the break and then get more into the Philly yeah, game yeah, yeah. from last night for sure. Uh, the last thing I learned that's crazy. There are two games tonight, by the way, Monday Night Football. One of those games is Giants-Packers, yeah. which is really a huge game now yeah. for the playoffs because both teams, believe it or not, are kind of playoff eligible. Green Bay for sure is. Giants but consider this. If the New York Giants win this game tonight against the Green Bay Packers, they're a game out of the playoffs. If they lose tonight's game against the Green Bay Packers, they get the fourth pick in the draft. <laughs> Think about that. So what are you, so what are you saying? Okay. So, okay. So, okay. Seriously, hold go, on. Go, hold go, on. Go, Somebody go. that doesn't follow yeah. football. Go ahead. Right? And they yeah. solely care about the Giants. Because their father loves Let's the Giants, go. right? Yeah. Explain to me I will. why should they give a damn about a team who's okay. four day, who if, if, if they make it, is going to yeah. get their butts kicked because out of the playoffs in the first Here's round. the decision you have to make as a fan. Do you want to get one of the young stud quarterbacks coming out of the draft, which you will get if you're picking top four? But you paint them. Or, or, or do you want to get embarrassed in the first round of the playoffs? That's the decision you have. They're, if they win tonight, a game out. If they lose tonight, they're a top four pick in the draft. That's crazy town. As a fan, you go for the so are you actually Let's two, go. Two former NFL guys, what would they rather happen? You go for the win. 100%. You're damn right you do. The Giants aren't making the playoffs. <laughs> 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 
The fifth thing I learned this weekend is that Greg Jennings is a hater. <laughs> All right, coming up. That's right. Hey, oh, hey, 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 filled hey, with hey. hate. He has a black heart. It's filled with hate. He had, oh, they're also playing the Packers tonight, so I understand oh, where the hatred's that's coming what from. It is. Okay. I know where it's coming from. Oh. He's a Packer Hall of Famer. Hey, can't it. blame him. Hey. All right, coming up. Huge win last night for the Dallas Cowboys. Hey, welcome back to the Card Show. Of course, Greg Jennings, Green Bay Packer Hall of Famer, Willie Colon, Super Bowl champion as well. And look at my man Dak Prescott. Ah. Not the MVP, but it don't matter because he's playing great football right now. That was the first touchdown of the game to C.D. Lamb. And from there, let's be honest, it was a route. At 10 nothing. you kind of felt like, I don't think Philly's going to make this close. Now, they did have the Jalen Carter, you know, sco scoop and yeah. score for a touchdown. That made it interesting. But this was a dominant performance from that Dallas Cowboy offense. And let's also acknowledge the man-to-man -man coverage Stephon Gilmore put on uh, A.J. Brown, who's obviously had a great year in Philadelphia. But I think we have figured out how to play the Eagle offense, right? Now, for some reason, Philly is not committed to running the football. And Dallas came in, and you could kind of sense it. It was kind of a tangible feeling where everybody questions our ability to win a big game against a really good team. We want to put that to rest, and I think the Cowboys did, at least for the moment. Do you agree or disagree? Yeah, I agree. And when, when you think about the last time the Dallas Cowboys defense was on the football field against a team, Deron Bland had a, his hands full with D.K. Metcalf, and they, he, he abused them. D.K. Metcalf did. They, Dan Quinn did a great job of not allowing that to even be a thought for this game. And how you do that is you allow your veteran savvy guy named Stephon Gilmore, yeah. a guy who you know he might get beat, but he's not going to get burned. And right here, you see him in man-to-man -man covers. Very savvy guy. He's going to be physical at the point of attack. He's going to make A.J. Brown earn everything. Can I ask you a quick question? I'm watching these videos, right? And I think you're doing a great job describing what uh, Stephon Gilmore's doing in man-to-man -man coverage. But I'm watching, I'm saying to myself, A.J. Brown doesn't make a move. So like, it, it, all he does is run straight. So that's that's again this <laughs> right? is the like collection this, of these well, plays that were shown. He he had he had opportunities. He, had, yeah. he got open. He made catches. But even that last one, when he made the catch, Stephon Gilmore didn't give up on the play. That's how he got the strip fumble. Yeah. Like the you have to have players who are going to never give up on the play. That's what Dan Quinn was relying on. That's what he was provided. And when we watch the game, if you watch the game, and I don't know if, if you anyone didn't, it. yeah. Stephon Gilmore was all over the tape last night. Yeah. And the reason why he's be a, he was able to be effective because of the pass rush for the Dallas Cowboys. You talk about Lawrence and Parker and Parsons and those guys. They was able to get home. So if they weren't able to get home, they was allowed. They they applied some pressure. What I loved about Michael Parsons yesterday, man, was that he recognized, man, I I need I need to have a breakout game. You talk about punching Lane Johnson in the mouth sure. and blood in his nose yeah. early in the game. Ooh. He from got a, called for it. Well, but, he did. but from a tackle standpoint, you punch me in my mouth. I'm like, whatever technique you told me about this game is now out the window. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Now it's like it's, it's beyond football at this point. Yeah. I'm on Sunday night football. You got my I taste my own blood. Nah, homie, we going to the parking lot. So I appreciate Michael Parsons for bringing the fight, but Lane Johnson, he's like, Lane, put your hands up, man. We, it's, yeah. it's, it's a dog fight. Look, so it's funny. You know, this is obviously the most anticipated game, that and the Kansas City Buffalo game, to be fair, which we will get to in one second. You know, it's we Dallas is weird because they've answered every question. Mm -hmm. They've answered every bell, frankly. You know, you have the bad loss back in week three yeah. or four, whatever it was, against the Cardinals. You know, they almost won in Philadelphia, probably should have won that game. But the question has been, fair or unfair, give me Dallas in a big game, and then I'll tell you who the Cowboys are. Mm -hmm. Dak Prescott yesterday, no interceptions, threw a couple touchdown passes, right, and played very, very well. Didn't throw for 400 yards, didn't have to. They dominated the game. All of a sudden, Tony Pollard was a much bigger factor, at least to the eyesight test, than he has been in recent weeks. And I think Dallas has now laid claim that it's a two-horse race, not a three-horse race in the NFC. It's Dallas and it's San Francisco. Yeah. Now, we know what happened when they met two months ago. San Flan blew the doors off Smacked and it was ugly. Yeah. But is anyone going to disagree with me? And again, this could change next week, of course, if Dallas loses to Buffalo and Philly beats Seattle. But right now, it feels like 
it's a two horse race. Yeah, it feels like that because we're, we're prisoners of the moment. And yeah, I, as I we think, should be. I was going to say, as we, in <laughs> right. my opinion, as yeah. you should be at times, but Philly is, play, Philly is just not playing good football. And at this stage, and you know playing this game, at right. this stage in the season, you gotta get right. you, it, it's either you're getting right or, or things are falling <laughs> apart. And by the way, it went Buffalo, it went San Francisco, it went Dallas. Uh-huh. Defensively, when you're giving up over 30 it's points a game over the course of three weeks, and two of those games, by the way, were in your building, yeah. That's a problem, and that's a tangible problem, Will. Schematically, they haven't adjusted well, right? Like you talk about, and, and Greg has talked about it fairly. You put Gilmore or A.J. Brown, you let them travel, right? Uh, defensively for the Eagles, they have done nothing to adjust, right? Like Zach Cunningham played yesterday, which, was, which they needed. But overall, you, sell the, you can tell there's miscommunication issues. Up front, they're not getting home as much as they used to. You talk about against the run, they're not as stout as they used to. So, so all these bright spots they had early in the year – you can't find them on tape. So they're struggling, and the offense can't help them. Now, again, I want to be fair to Philadelphia. No, I don't. But I'm going to be fair <laughs> to Philadelphia. And that is, I'm not sure what happens against Seattle next week. But the final three weeks, my gut is that Philadelphia gets healthy right quick. Because you have the Giants twice. And even though the Giants have become an interesting story with Tommy DeVito. Yep. And if they win tonight, they're a game out of the wild card. The Eagles should bury them in reality. And the same with the Arizona Cardinals. So I'm not quite sure things get better for Philadelphia until we get past next week's game and get into the final three weeks. Yeah, listen, at the end of the day, it starts with Jalen Hurts. you got to take care of the football, right? Like, you've been the bright spot and right now. As I think 15 turnovers, yeah, right? Yeah, like, you 15 on a year, you're a better quarterback than that. This team needs you. But we talk about one thing about every quarterback has a surrounding cast, man. Like, DeAndre Swift, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. You had Goddard in the lineup yesterday. Sure did. All these guys didn't pop off the table. I, we said it behind the curtain. Early in that game, A.J. Brown had a big drop. That hit him right in the hands. And what, what drops do, and maybe you can contest, uh, talk about this, Greg. When you talk about offense, that's, when you talk about offense that needs rhythm and you have drops, that just sinks you back, right? Yeah. Because you're looking for splash plays and you're looking for your playmakers to get them. It deflates all of the air yeah. that you're trying to put into an offense. And it, it, it really, for me, when I watch this team, they're, they're predicated on that big play. Even though we know that they can run the ball and we're kind of scratching our heads at why they're not running the ball more predominantly, it's – it's been because of the run that they've been able to get those big plays. And so should we really be surprised that they're not getting those big yeah. splash plays because they're not running the ball at the clip? So let me ask you guys a question. The Look, they're 10 and 3. No one's got a better record, but they're going the wrong way. Other teams now, you know, eclipse them and passing them for the number one seed for the division, at least in the moment. Dallas does have the lead, but that's a little fugazi because if Philly wins out, they win the division. No matter what Dallas does, Philly's in total control. Of the division, they're not in total control of the one seed, and that's important because they could come in as the two seed as opposed to the five seed. So more on that, obviously, in the weeks to come. Here's the fair question I think we have. What's the level of concern? Like, which Eagle team do we think we're going to get? The Eagle team that over the last three weeks has got one and two and given up over 30 points a game, or the Eagle team that reeled off nine consecutive wins? I'm not sure which Eagle team I'm going to get the rest of the season. And I say that acknowledging that they're going to win the last three games and maybe the last four games and go into the playoffs feeling a lot different in a good way about themselves. Well, it's troubling. You don't want to see self-sabotage if you consider yourself a Super Bowl contender, right? You don't want to see the turnovers. You don't want to see a stagnant offense. You want to see a defense that wins you games and not lose you games. Yeah. And that's what we're all witnessing. So if you talk about what we can see, you can only go off what your tape is telling you. They're telling you they're not a good outfit right now and they're losing tough games. Well, right now I think it's a two-horse race. But go ahead, Greg. Yeah, uh, so when, when we think about the Eagles and coming out of that bye, you got the Kansas City Chiefs, Buffalo Bills, obviously the Niners, and then the Cowboys mm-hmm. yesterday. Like, we were all saying, if you split, you're, you're good. Shape, yeah. Right. Well, they split. Yep. And so, be, but but it was, it's the it's optics. Different. It's it, how you split. Yes, there you it's go. how there you they go. split and how they look in those losses and in the wins. Like, the, in the glaring holes that well, we have identified here's the point in you're all making. four of those games. In week nine... Dak Prescott steps out of bounds and misses Ferguson for the game-winning touchdown. In week 11, MVS drops the ball in his hands to win the game. In week 12, Gabe Davis wide open in the end zone for a game-winning touchdown. Josh Allen doesn't connect with him. They get blown out by San Francisco. They get blown out by the Cowboys. You could make the argument. I know they didn't. 
but they played poorly enough to lose five consecutive games here this season. So, who are the Eagles? I think they're paper jackets. And, and yeah. that's that's the five consecutive yeah, games that they could have lost after the bye. Not we're not even talking about the right. games <laughs> right. before the bye. All right. Meanwhile, while Dallas does take care of business and they're kind of the uh, the, the cock of the walk right now in the NFC East. They're the ha- what? The cock of the walk. Cock it's of the walk. Phrase, it's a phrase. It's actually a restaurant. It's a phrase too. you're allowed to use. I checked. It's a, it's restaurant. a phrase. Meaning like they're peacocking right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> NFC East. Yeah. You know. Sit down. We're the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, That's I hated cock of the walk. Like, okay. That was Meanwhile, a <laughs> from Dallas last yeah. night to the crybabies <laughs> of Kansas City, who won a Super Bowl last year off an official's call against James Bradbury. They don't like the fact that Kadarius Tony in this crazy play gets called for being off sides. Look at Travis Kelsey. Yo, Taylor Swift. Bang. To Kadarius Tony wide open. That should have been the go-ahead touchdown late. Oh, but Kadarius Tony. What are you looking at? Lined up way off sides. You can't even dispute it. And here's the reality. Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes spoke to the media, I'm sure, before they got an opportunity to see this video. So I'll give them a small pass on what they're about to say. But what they said was comical at best. Andy and then Mahomes. Let us hear it, boys. I never use any of this as excuses, but normally I get a warning before something like that happens in a big game. Um, a bit embarrassing in the National Football League for that, that to take right? place. To take away greatness like that, I mean, for a Aww. guy like Travis to make a play like that, and who knows if we win, but as I know as fans, you want to see the guys on the field decide the game, and that's why last week, I didn't say anything about the flag. They didn't get called on the Marquez. <laughs> and so, I mean, I, it's, I mean, they're human, men. They make mistakes. But, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's every week we're talking about something. Look, you're talking about $25,000 fine. It's what you're going to be talking about. He can afford it. At some point by the end of the day today, no doubt he can afford it. Yeah. But it's funny how you know, you got short memories, unlike elephants. And that is the fact that you won a Super Bowl on a referee's call. And you didn't say, I wish you didn't call that holding on Bradbury. I wanted to let us play it out on the field and decide the outcome of a Super Bowl. Kadarius Tony was offsides, period, stop. He forced the referee to make that call. And you can bitch and moan about it all you want. And you can tell me till the cows come home that the referees suck. I don't disagree. But in this particular case, number one, it's not why you lost the game. Number two, he is off sides. The ref had no choice but to throw the flag, Greg Jennings. I think that's one, two, and three. Like, he's offsides. He's blatantly offsides. And in, in this type of a situation, you have every opportunity to make it right. That's right. You have every opportunity as a receiver to look out to your left and identify where the ref is and say, am I, am I good? He will look at you and tell you to back up if you are not or to get on the ball if you need to get on the ball. In this moment, in the moment that he needed to do it, ah, he didn't do it. And right. so for me, when I hear Andy Reid talk about normally you get a warning, you he's do, right. Though. You do. You do you get do. a warning. You get a warning all game if it were happening over and over and over again. At this junction in the game, it's the fourth quarter. It's under a, it's a minute or whatever is left in the game, 125 left in the game. Right. I can't warn you. You can. I can't you not simply, warn you. But, I, but there, Craig, I can't you can. warn you in you this moment. You simply say, 19, step back. Give me a little bit. So I tell you, so are you saying that it's the yes. job of the referee to say, hey, I'm not going to throw the flag this time. Hey, I'm going to give you a warning. Great. You, you Have guys, not I've heard it. I've heard it. You've heard it at his play. We've heard other players get it. So why not in this situation? Because My point is if you're the refs, yeah. if you're the refs, right, yeah, you you've call. been inconsistent. And here's your opportunity. Game on the line. Chiefs are driving. America's watching. But here's the you got an opportunity here's to not question. be a factor, and now you're a factor no, in the game. Be, no, no. Putting it on the refs is cheap and easy. It oh. is. And it's not right in this This is only Kadarius Tony. Yeah. By the way, we're all the nonsense about the refs. Refs have to be better. We agree. The refs have to be more consistent. We agree. But how about the onus on a veteran wide receiver to not line up two yards off sides? What do you say? Like, we're not asking for much. I- I'm asking. This is on Kadarius Tony. I'm asking. And you know it. I'm asking for a ref d- to do what refs do. Give yeah. Me, give me oh, one. stop it. And, then they you, you and they'll do you <laughs> one better. 
Explain to me how the referees played a role in second and 15, incomplete pass short right, broken up by Von Miller. Third and 15, incomplete short left, broken up by Oliver. Fourth and 15, incomplete throwing the ball to God knows who on fourth and 15. The Kansas City Chiefs offense against a mediocre Bills defense had three more downs. Not to score a touchdown, but to get a first down and keep the drive going yeah. to maybe go ahead and win the game. And they didn't get another yard. Not one. So you can bitch and moan all you want about the refs. It falls on deaf ears. Unless, unless Kansas City, you want to give back last year's Super Bowl ring. Not- if you want to give it back, then we can have the conversation. But the Lord giveth, and, and the, the Lord, Lord taketh away. away. <laughs> and that's the reality of NFL football, boys and girls. Yeah. Sorry, not sorry. By the way, we have a doubleheader tonight. Yes, and remember this. <laughs> You've got Miami blowing out Tennessee. Keep trying, Casey. But that giant Packer game is for the playoffs. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.